scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Hallelujah. You can give people money. You can give people privileges. But one of the ways you bless people is to enlighten them. Unfortunately, we live in a generation that frowns at enlightenment because enlightenment is intangible and we have been trained by our environment to be carnal. We always want something we can hold and relate with here and now, such as money, clothes, cars, and all of these very, very mundane things. But the informations that are intangible, that empower us, Usually we do not have the patience to submit. Uh, I was having a conversation with one of the protocol people while I was on my way coming and I was driving and I looked at him. He was sitting at the other side and I was wondering why I was looking at him while I was driving at the same time. And I told him, I said, look, my friend, you will never succeed in life if you are not mentored and trained. And he looked at me. I said, listen carefully to what I'm about to teach when we come. And I was giving him instances. I have learned and I am more convinced than ever before that training and mentorship is how successful people are made. It's not one of the ways. It's the only way. There are no options. Any other person giving you an option is a sign that he doesn't know what he's saying. Yeah mentorship and training is the only way people can become sustainably successful truthfully speaking mentorship is not listening to a man speak to you listen carefully that's attendance mentorship is not opening up your ears to a man's teachings and having the teachings in your your archives your laptops your systems it may be a pathway but mentorship starts with a decision that I am willing to submit myself to be taught and I will insist till I understand. Praise God. Mentorship does not start with the availability of information. It starts with a determination from the heart of the one who will be the recipient. It's a manifestation of humility to admit that there are dimensions that we do not yet see and know and have regardless of what our achievements are when we come before god and we come before people he has anointed to teach to train to build it is important that you assume the position of a student immediately and listen carefully and not just take notes but write it in the tablets of your heart and then obtain grace. That's why we pray after every message. Why? We are obtaining grace to walk in the reality of what we have heard. The Bible says, now that ye know these things, happy are you if you do them. It's one thing to know, but it's another thing to have the grace to do. Brothers and sisters, listen. I may not boast. It will be arrogant to boast of knowing everything. Nobody knows everything. It will be arrogant to make a boast to claim to have arrived. But one thing I can tell you is if you submit yourselves to these teachings, 
wholeheartedly under God, you will never fail. Regardless, it's, it's not a prayer, it's the resultant effect. Trust me on this. The ideas that we communicate to you in this house are not necessarily my ideas alone. They have been age-long ideas that have been used by men and women who changed the course of history. They have been age-long ideas that our fathers have used to do mighty things for God. And now God has granted us the privilege to access these ideas. So I don't want you, whilst you are listening to these things, to have a cynical heart debating whether or not you think is worthy of acceptance. Uh, personally, I've made a commitment to believe and work with them. So whether or not you do not believe it, it does not affect my outcome. Because you see, success is not corporate. Everybody will have to obey himself into the promised land. I can help you, but I can't force you there. I came tonight with a very strong burden and I was very excited when the Lord put this in my heart. It had been something that I had planned to share, but um, I mean, it was, it was so powerful when the Lord put it in my heart. I really want you to succeed. God sees my heart and um, the leaders know how much we are passionately committed about the success of everyone. I believe and I have held this conviction for years. And I have taught many, including our students in the school of ministry, that loyalty, loyalty, loyalty is a debt that you must pay. When people are loyal to you, it's as though you owe them something. When people are loyal to your anointing, loyal to your words, loyal to your grace, loyal to the dealings of God upon your life, you must reciprocate that loyalty by ensuring that their trust is not disappointed. That's why we pray. That's why we fast. That's why we prepare. That's why we research. That's why we study to make sure that every information that you receive is not only spiritual, but life applicable and indomitable. Having a character that can suppress whatever limitations. Hallelujah. So pray one more time and say, Lord, I submit myself afresh. Please pray from your heart. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Hallelujah. Success system. Part one. Success systems. Part one. Success systems. Part one. The goal of this series is twofold. Number one, to reveal to us the requirements, the requirements that must be satisfied. For you to experience lasting kingdom success. Number two, to unveil to you the laws, the principles, the secrets, the mysteries that are responsible for commanding success from God's standpoint. It's an attempt to help our lives bear fruit. It's an attempt to make and help contribute to making our lives meaningful. It's an attempt to improving the quality of our lives and to help us um, in our quest to become effective spiritual people effective kingdom ambassadors it's an attempt to create balance to every area of our lives so that we are not unfruitful in any aspect so this is a very powerful series we're starting off with part one 
and um, I pray that God will help us two scriptures very quickly and then we'll take the course content second second Peter chapter 1 verse 8 please media we need to work with us very very fast tonight media help us second Peter 1 verse 8 and then we'll look at Genesis 39 verse 2 to 6 it says for if these things be in you what things certain informations certain traits for if these things be in you and abound are lavish it says they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in this context it says in the knowledge of the lord jesus christ but it applies to every area of life if these things abound in you and they are lavish they will produce an effect the effect is that they can stop barrenness and unfruitfulness from your life it didn't say if these things be around you if these things be in you if you believe them and buy them then it says you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful genesis 39 four verses two to six genesis 39 and the lord was with joseph and he was a prosperous man and he was in the house of his master the egyptian we're reading to verse six and his master saw that the lord was with him and that the lord did what made all that he did to prosper in his hand and joseph found favor or grace in his sight and he served him and he made him overseer over his house and all that he had put in his hands verse 5 and it came to pass from that time that he had made him overseer in his house and over all that he had that the lord blessed the egyptian's house for joseph's sake and the blessing of the lord was upon all that he had in the house and in the field the last verse and he left all that he had in Joseph's hand. Everybody say trust. And he knew not what, and he knew not what he had, save the bread which he did eat. And Joseph was a goodly person and well favored. Help us tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Write down the things we are going to be considering in this series. Please write those online follow us or at least you'll be patient to allow the media lead you there are a few things that we're going to be looking at and wherever we can stop tonight we'll stop and pray but please i want to take my time and teach you this i want you to understand it and i trust that god will take advantage of this series to bless and lift us in jesus name the first thing we'll be considering tonight is the reality of failure how real is failure is it a mirage or is it real number two we're going to look at the concept of success in the kingdom number two we're going to look at the concept of success in the kingdom what is god's idea of a successful person the concept of success in the kingdom number three we're going to look at the concept of laws and principles the concept of laws and principles can i continue number four definition of terminologies there's too much confusion so we need to clarify terminologies as it regards or as it relates to kingdom success definition of terminologies and then number four number five thank you the laws of success the laws of success we're going to be examining the laws and then number six will end with a very strong impartation and trust god to carry something that will activate these dimensions in our lives praise the lord if you believe it say amen, amen. now statistically speaking statistically speaking five 
out of every hundred people ever become successful in their lifetime five percent out of every hundred people that you see only about five percent of them ever become successful whether from a human standpoint in fact when you say from a divine standpoint the statistic reduces again very few people a young man gets up living his life bubbling with joy hoping he will be successful and you see the the excitement of life on his face but that same young man give him 70 80 years down the line is a testimony of pain a testimony of regrets a testimony of sadness lost opportunities mishandled laws a life of fatal failure most people die in pain most people die advising their children don't be like me most people die apologizing to their generation because they finally are forced to swallow the bitter pill and admit they did not make it pastors business people parents young people the same challenge is eating up our society the correct definition of success and a life that will become a template and a model enough worthy of emulation as far as kingdom success is concerned so it's, it's a big issue it's a tragedy that about five percent can you imagine that out of every hundred people whether they are church goers fasting giants prayer warriors five percent of them eventually will become successful whether in ministry whether in business in fact um it, it is said that over 70 to 80 percent of churches that start up end by the end of that year they can't continue no members no resources no wisdom spiritual forces that they've not been able to surmount and other auxiliary factors that add to enforce the failures of people write this down failure is real failure is real second point failure will happen to you if you allow it i think it's a revelation many of us need to come to terms with we have this inheritance mindset that by default just because you have a nice name or you think you are too kind to fail there's no such reality in the school of success let me tell you everybody is a potential candidate for failure until you exempt yourself is a reality that is upon us by default <laughs> a lot of spiritual people will say i reject it you better listen quietly to what i'm saying i am a very spiritual person i have learned the foolishness the foolishness of exaggerating truth beyond the jurisdiction of their relevance is what causes failure as a side effect please listen carefully i love you too much to deceive you I love you too much to mislead you and one of the graces God has given us in this ministry is capacity for balance so anything you hear that you do not understand just be patient by God's grace I'm a good builder every house is built by some man he says but God is the builder of all and so we will not build a house that is lopsided we'll build a house that stands solid on the rock no matter what shakes it it remains there say amen failure is real brothers and sisters there are pastors who are failures regardless of their spirituality there are churches that are failing and have failed some of us here seated right now it's an uncomfortable truth but right now if you will admit you know you are failing woefully for many of us are we together now yes disappointed expectations and it's important that we find out God's system to bail ourselves out and do so very, very fast. So failure is real. Failure is very real. We see it every day. You see failure in the face of angry people who walk upon our streets. 
you see failure in the face of failed marriages a man and a woman who love themselves and have an agreement to live happily and right now you see someone age 24 and he tells you i have divorced how long did you marry six months one year how about failed businesses how about failed career pathways how about failed ministries how about disappointed expectations i should enter a particular dimension of the anointing by now and after donkey years you are still there wallowing around in mediocrity failure is real it lives among us we see it in the faces of our dear loved ones we see it in the frustration of our parents you watch them and you know they are frustrated some of them are too arrogant to admit it so they act as though they are still in control but many have been forced painfully so to admit that there is something they are missing many people have been forced amplified by the recession to swallow their pride and admit i'm not getting something right nobody becomes a success by accident nobody becomes a success by chance by luck yesterday i was ministering at a crusade and i gave an instance i think I've, I've given that instance here and i want to repeat that example watch this if i make a mistake and forget that there is a step down and then i sleep and i march will gravity forgive me and say no i know you were joking you were not serious next time be serious no gravity does not have in its configuration the assumption that men make mistake every time i violate that law of gravity i pay for it and i do so immediately and sometimes i may not have a second chance again this is how success is and this is how failure is listen many well-intentioned people many christians born again and filled with the holy spirit have indoctrinated themselves into believing that just because of that status their life should succeed automatically no being a christian gives you the potential and the access for success there is a difference between access and delivery access means potentials delivery means experience listen very carefully all that jesus christ did for us on the cross gives us access but there are systems built in the dealings of god with men that converts access to delivery where you are now a a manifesto of those realities one of my very great mentors dr mike mudok he's taught the body of christ for a very long time that there are two dimensions to the dealings of god with man there are two dimensions to the approach of spiritual things number one he calls it the person of jesus and number two he calls it the principles of jesus number one he calls it the life of god number two he calls it the laws of god everybody say the life of god say the person of jesus say the principles of jesus and mike mudok teaches that the person of jesus is what gives you that encounter that creates your peace and secures your eternal destiny with god but it's not necessarily the key for your victory here and now are we together now so i can be born again filled with the holy spirit if i die i'm going to heaven if jesus comes i'm going to heaven i can live a life of peace whether in plenty or lack because his person has consumed me i have conformed to the image of the christ experientially but then the dimension that is responsible for my success and victory on earth is not just the person of jesus but the principles of jesus everybody say the principles of jesus that means i can be born again filled with the holy spirit and yet be sick born again filled with the holy spirit and yet be poor born again filled with the holy spirit and yet fail in career born again filled with the holy spirit and become a 
total failure in life such a possibility exists now most christians have embraced the life of god but we have ignored his principles are we together now and most unbelievers have ignored the life of god but embraced his principles so most of them are going to hell because they have openly declared that jesus is not lord over their lives but they have lived their entire lives applying the kingdom applying the principles of the kingdom and i've taught you here in koinonia that there is a dimension of god's power that is programmed into his laws so that whoever obeys them will get the result regardless of whether he has a relationship with god or not there is a dimension of the power and the ability of god that is programmed in laws so it doesn't matter who applies them there are certain dimensions that are privy to only believers it is only in christ that those dimensions can be obtained like peace like the joy in the holy ghost are we together now like the life of jesus security of your eternal destiny the ability to count it all joy when you face diverse temptations all of these attributes are not possible to the man who has not embraced christ but the principles of the kingdom the aspect that we have largely ignored i've shared with us on my my idea and i believe that that's god's idea of spiritual growth that there are two indices to measure a man's spiritual growth number one is the degree of your conformity to the image and the person of christ you're rising in character you are confirming experientially to the image of the christ but the second dimension the second index is your comprehension of the mysteries and the secrets of the kingdom both are required together to say you are growing spiritually if all that is happening to you is conformity to the image of christ that is a lopsided and a biased growth if all that is happening to you is just access to the principles of the kingdom and you never encounter the person and the life you will be carnal and you will never become a spiritual man so the synergy between these two dimensions is what produce spiritual men who are relevant both in time and eternity if that is you say amen are we together so failure is very real i think it was a wise man i don't know who exactly who said doing the same thing consistently and expecting a different result is one of the definitions of insanity doing the same thing and hoping and wishing that that same thing you are doing will just change results by itself he said it's one of the definition of insanity in other words if your outcome is not consistent with your desire then you have to check what you believe and what you are doing are we together now everyone say failure is real and it's not my portion write this down the word success let's define it let's look at the concept of success in the kingdom lord give us understanding give us passion to learn please give us isaiah 117 a scripture just came into my spirit and i want you to see it isaiah chapter 1 verse 17 write this word down success what is the definition of success i'm i'm trying to introduce the concept of success because please look up the body of christ has had issues for a very long time there are many denominations and there are many christians some of them looking at me right now many listening to me online every time you mention the word success especially in church and to a christian there is this build up of resentment we have associated success with carnality we have taught and indoctrinated ourselves into believing that there are two groups of people in the body of christ those who are carnal they don't love god and want to be successful and those who are total failures now for the sake of their spiritual growth there's no such doctrine in the bible the bible says looking up to jesus not up to a denomination not up to a pastor it's important to follow us but be sure we are following christ 
and if at any point you are not following christ it is within your power to switch paul said follow me as i follow christ i have shared with us again the danger of creating doctrines out of personalized dealings that a man can have a particular bias which may be a product of his cultural limitation let me tell you something many of these doctrines that were shipped into the church and, and you know i love the body of christ and i don't say it with any particular sense of cynicism i'm teaching the body and so we must realize that most of these things that have become stumbling blocks listen carefully many of us have inherited this from our parents many of our, our loved ones so spiritual and well-meaning but this this um mindset especially for all of us who are around the middle belt and the northern area because of the evangelical nature of christianity and the way we received it we have been taught that any attention that is paid to your comfort and giving your life some sense of meaning here and now is useless so in an attempt to emphasize the fact that we need to live with eternity in view we have created a system of mediocrity and camped around it so there are many lazy men who have used evangelical christianity as an excuse to keep them lazy keep their wives and their children in poverty and penury and suffering there are men today who have not have not been working for over 20 years and it, it doesn't matter one room with your children they were born and bred there and he said the most important thing is this world is not our home one day we are going somewhere is an expression of carelessness so there are many doctrines that have endorsed laziness endorsed irresponsibility endorsed lack of productivity so the average believer has been unable to rise to a position of kingdom influence where we can legislate on behalf of the kingdom it's a tragic situation please give us the scripture again he said read the first four words if you are a christian one to read again the word do well is the word succeed so change it and use it well one to go again it didn't say be successful it says learn you must be taught it says learn to do well it's not just saying make it uh -uh. learn be studious submit yourself under the atmosphere and the information that will cause you to do well when i saw that scripture it was quite instructive learn to succeed joshua selman learn it is not in you by default learn the same way um where is he doctor it's not a doctor by default but you learn to become a doctor you learn to become an architect are we together you learn to become a mother that's why when ladies give birth for the first time their mothers or any of their guardians come around right and help them they can read books and google and search but it's one thing to have that theory and then all of a sudden the mother comes and says okay i will help you and then helps her and she becomes strong and then tomorrow she will help her own children learn say i will learn and i will succeed say i will learn i will be trained and i will succeed look at this when you want to become a doctor what do you do you pass through the medical school correct when you want to become an engineer what do you do you pass through the engineering school when you want to become an architect what do you do you pass through the system so when you want to become a success what do you do unfortunately there is no official institution for making people successful you see why many people are failures there are many graduates because there are many universities there are many primary school certificate holders because there are many primary schools there are many prisoners because there are many prisons and there are many opportunities for crime but there are few successful people because there are few successful mentors and there are few successful platforms that can help men become successful learn to do well write this down success is the accomplishment
accomplishment of a worthy goal write it down the word success has nothing to do with money it has nothing to do with all of these things success is the accomplishment of a worthy goal any goal that is ideal that is worthwhile when you set goals and achieve them you are said to be successful this is the general definition of success the accomplishment of a worthy goal a worthy ideal i want to become a doctor and then you pass through the system and you become a doctor with respect to that goal you are successful i want to become a joyful mother and you walk towards it and then eventually you get married and have your children with respect to that goal you are successful so without goals there is no basis for being successful are we together now the accomplishment of a worthy goal a worthy ideal is what we call success now let me give you a kingdom definition of success i've given you a general definition let's look at a kingdom definition write this down the fulfillment of your god-given assignment is called success from god's standpoint the fulfillment of your god-given assignment not just any goal if an arm robber says i must steal and then he steals successfully from an earthly standpoint we say he has succeeded from but from the kingdom standpoint is not a success the fulfillment of your divine assignment the fulfillment of your god-given assignment is called success another definition the effective use this is my own definition now the effective use of your life your gifts and your resources to draw men to jesus and bless humanity is called success i'll take it again the effective use of your life comma your gifts comma your resources to draw men to jesus and then to be a blessing to humanity is my definition of success so when you use your life like a drink offering when you use your gifts and when you use your resources to draw men to jesus and then an opportunity to be a blessing to humanity by God's standpoint and by men's standpoint, you are a success. Are we together now? The effective use of your life. The effective use of your gifts. The effective use of your resources to draw men to Jesus and then to bless humanity. To advance the purposes of the kingdom and to be a blessing to humanity that's success are you blessed now very important I, I need all of us to have this understanding so that when we talk about success we are not talking of some money mongering greedy lifestyle because this is another side of the pendulum there are many people who are so carnal so fleshly the entire circumference of their christian experience is just money and houses and cars everything about their understanding of god is the one who gives my job is to just take take and be rich take and buy suit buy designers right move around the world in private jets and then we coin that and say this is my life it is a very misguided and not only misguided destructive idea about success that's what puts people under pressure to try to acquire things because we hope that by acquiring things will prove a point to people now the truth is if you are successful it will show around you but the acquisition of things is not equivalent to success in the kingdom that you are wearing a suit of a thousand or two thousand dollars you are wearing shoes you are having estates all around and you are a great man moving around and people bow down to you and people call you all kinds of names and you have multiplied troubles multiplied psychophants that does not make you a success 
how much you use your life how much you use your gifts how much you use your resources to draw men to jesus and then to live a life of impact blessing your world blessing your humanity every other thing cars houses all these auxiliary benefits are just effects of success not the proof of success the proof you have succeeded is the joy in the heart of the father the proof you have succeeded is a life transformed not a car in your garage the proof that you have succeeded is somebody coming to know jesus because you did business well somebody coming to know jesus because you read your book well somebody coming to know jesus because of your marriage somebody coming to love jesus because of your ministry when your life has the capacity to draw men regardless of what area you are functioning to jesus and then an opportunity to make a mark to transform their lives you are successful by this definition you will agree with me that there are very few people who are successful there are many rich people but they are not successful there are many educated people but they are not successful haven't seen this definition why then are many people failures what is the reason is it that there is no access to knowledge is it that satan is so powerful and can veto everything jesus died for is it that uh, though if the few who are successful were just designed by god to be successful why do we have a whole generation as failures a whole community as failures i will tell you why because of one word just one word is called dishonor i'm going to be teaching you a lot of things we're still going to come to this issue of honor there is one reason why any one of you here will be a failure in life only one reason it's not that you didn't go to school it's not that you graduated with a third class no that's a silly excuse it's not that you are a northerner and they are victimizing you down south or you are a southerner and they are victimizing you down north or you are an easterner and they are victimizing you those are very flimsy excuses they are obvious answers but not correct answers are we together there is only one reason why men fail in life dishonor dishonor to god dishonor to men dishonor to principles there's only one reason why people fail and there's only one reason why they will remain failures dishonor dishonor to god dishonor to men dishonor to principles is god helping us write this down laws and principles laws and principles l a w s and then principles i want us to examine the concept of laws and principles jesus thank you look at me in any other and every other aspect of our lives we believe in laws and principles but when it comes to our spiritual lives and our destinies we do not believe that they walk by principles it's a tragedy it's a tragedy please hear me brothers and sisters it's a tragedy when you go to school you know that there are laws and principles you are a science-based student they teach you all kinds of science things physics chemistry they teach you how to do a lot of things they teach you what to do they teach you laws different kinds of laws and the more you master those laws the more you keep advancing and then eventually when you have gained certain dimensions of mastery they award certain certificates to you but when it comes to destiny we have been indoctrinated into believing that we are just believers and whether we respect laws or not we will become successful i will tell you where our resentment for laws came from the imbalance and the inaccurate teaching of the concept of law and works this is where we got our resentment for the word laws 
great men and women of God scattered across the face of the earth in an attempt, and I believe everything that they teach, in an attempt to explain or to bring the body of Christ into the reality of Christ's finished work. Listen carefully. In an attempt to show how that the old is gone, the Old Testament, you know, and that we are products of this New Testament now, in an attempt to help believers live the victorious life, we have from one person copying another without finding out what exactly is being said. We have drifted to another side of the pendulum. And so the average believer, especially the average Pentecostal charismatic believer, when you hear the word laws, when you hear the word principles, you just reject it. You don't even need to know law of what. You just say, no, 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 I'm not under the law. Write this down. Laws. Are systems is a system of rules that guarantee a predictable outcome a law is a system of rules or just a system of operation either a system of rules or a system of operation that guarantees a predictable outcome so laws are systems of operations there are systems of rules that if and when diligently applied guarantee predictable outcomes write this down laws are a reflection of god's justice system laws are a reflection of god's justice system the bible says righteousness and justice are the foundations it didn't say where it never changed righteousness and justice are still the foundations of his throne laws are a reflection of god's justice system so that nobody will say god victimized others and did certain things no he leaves it into your hands to define whether or not you will succeed or fail write this down laws are the keys to consistency and predictability laws are the keys please pay attention especially those following online wherever you are i want you to please pay attention take notes if you can't follow us on facebook and, and we're tweeting and then we're we're making posts please follow i have a passion to help you understand this laws are the keys to consistency and predictability write this down when your results do not change regardless of obstacles then you are operating by laws when your results your outcomes do not change regardless of the prevailing obstacles is a sign that you are engaging laws hallelujah so you see a ministry celebrating 36 years a ministry celebrating 40 years people like Kenneth Copeland, Benny Hinn, 40 something years in ministry. Brothers and sisters, that ministry was built by laws. It was not just built by emotions. Many great corporations across the world. I don't know what the oldest um, retail outfit is in Nigeria. The oldest restaurant in Nigeria. But we have very great um, restaurants across the nation of the earth. Right? Like Colonel Sanders and his Kentucky Fried Chicken. And a number of people walmart and all of this some of those outfits are hundreds of years old the founders have long been dead but the laws kept it write this down laws make your results outlive you laws and principles make your results outlive you laws and principles make your results outlive you write this down finally and then i'll begin to teach correct understanding and application of laws are the keys to outstanding success correct understanding and application of laws are the keys to outstanding success correct understanding not just application correct understanding and application of laws and principles are the keys to outstanding success 
Everybody look at this. Mike is playing something. Do you know that the same way he's playing this, if someone in Ghana, if someone in America plays based on whatever sequence is playing, they will get the same result because they are based on laws. Is that true? Please help me with this. This is Nestle water. How many of you know there's Nestle water in Lagos? How many of you know there's Nestle water in Ibadan? How many of you know there's Nestle water in Maiduguri? The taste is almost the same, if not the same. The packaging and everything. When you look at this one and leave and go to a shop somewhere and you look at it, you would think they took the one here, there. There is consistency in results. There is sustainability. There is predictability. There are many workers. Those who package this in Lagos may not be those who package it in another geopolitical zone. But they are all governed by the same laws. So their results are the same. Correct? Thank you. Um, Pastor Femi, please come. My friend, please come. Two of you, please stand here. Now look how smart they are both looking. Stand here, please. Now look at this. Pastor Femi has a knotted tie. And this gentleman here has a knotted tie. Now watch this. Were you in the same room when you were knotting your ties? Did you meet yourselves? Did you know you were going to knot ties? But you took this rope, did something to it, and it became this. And you see how much it looks like the same thing. Both of them were miles apart, but engaging the same principle. And regardless of their location, the results were the same. Are we together now? Now, this time, would not say, Lila, I'm not going to not because I'm not in Koinonia. No. If a thief not this tie to dress smart and go and steal, the tie will not say you are a thief. In two hours, you are about to steal. I won't agree. No. Laws laws if a wicked man plants maize and a tongue-talking born-again agriculturist plants maize both lands will produce and in fact this guy may even have a bumper harvest correct laws create similarity of results so if i want to teach someone else how to be a smart gentleman like this not in ties i don't need to tell him come and live with me forever i just need to show him how to convert a rope a nylon rope or a cotton rope are we together now to become such a beautiful object that you can put on your neck thank you sirs. so it's not just where you are it's not just your background there is something you do not know. You've heard me say it many times. Something I do not know is responsible for my limitation in life. How true? How true? The correct understanding and application of laws are the keys to outstanding success. We had a great time over at Bidda. Um, we rounded off the meeting yesterday and I'm sure some of them are following. It was such a great time as God always does in the meetings and I had a little session with the leaders and many of them kept asking me questions man of God what is the secret to your anointing and I in my mind I thought I said if I tell these people now they will not believe it Do you see that as I'm speaking to you right now somebody in another meeting unconnected to koinonia is still experiencing wisdom and the power of God at the same time you look at a graduate from UNN. You look at a graduate from ABU. You look at a graduate from Unilag. Bring all of them together. Haven't never met themselves. But they were submitted to the same laws. They will talk as though they know. They've known themselves for years. Correct? That means there is something all of us can know. That regardless of where you are. All of us will call and they'll say, are you experiencing the same result? You say, exactly as said. Do you believe that? 
honestly if you don't believe this just go home because it will be that you are wasting your time this night the, the goal of this teaching is to create predictability to your success is, is success important somebody may be asking me be patient and ask me five years from now remain the way you are and keep going I will be glad to answer you five years from now when you watch what happened to those who are five years ahead of you now when you watch the pain when you watch three children stand before you and say daddy we are hungry when you watch your child become an arm robber simply because of failure then you will ask that question again is success important it's a terrible thing please be careful how you listen to people don't criticize men of God. Don't criticize leaders, even business experts. Be careful. Right now we have all kinds of business experts. Anyone just chokes himself with tie, holding all kinds of hilarious seminars everywhere and teaching all kinds of garbages and nonsense. And in the end of it, you are so motivated because of the rhetorics and the gimmicks that are used. And then at the end of it, you find out that your life is just an emotional roller coaster and you get back into square one be careful i desire to succeed with my life i have tasted a bit of it it gives me joy to be able to lead a flourishing ministry i know how painful it is to suffer and struggle in ministry i know how painful it is to come and prepare as a man of god and not have anybody to bless today by the grace of god we are reaching several nations of the world and we are only starting i have tasted a bit of the potency of these laws and i know they work they will work for you in the name of jesus christ they will work for you in the name of jesus christ one of i think is i think his patients i spot her here she sent me a text very very funny text and um she's a student in the school of ministry and i've been teaching them a number of things and then she she went to zamfara and had an opportunity to pray for someone to be filled with the holy spirit according to her she was shaking and wondering whether it will happen and i mean in minutes that person was shaking and blasting in tongues and she called me and said my god look at this thing and then she tried it on another person and it worked flawlessly predictability predictability there are keys nobody is born rich nobody is born blessed are we together he said in iniquity did my mother conceive me your you can live out like that or you can change i made a decision that i will change it's a decision that i made and i want you tonight if you have not made that decision to make a strong decision i'm taking it gradually with us because i want us to understand this let's define terminologies right we're going to define 14 words that we'll be playing around with in this series 14 words that have been misunderstood i don't want to make the mistake of believing that when i mention a word all of us understand that this is what i'm saying write it down the first word i've already defined it success the accomplishment of a worthy goal am i boring you please write the second word i want us to define and familiarize ourselves with is failure what is failure write it down that's the second word i'll be very very fast so that we can stop somewhere and pray jesus we bless you failure is a state or condition of not meeting a desirable or intended objective failure is a state or a condition of not meeting a desirable or intended objective you are said to have failed when you do not meet up to a desirable objective or an intended objective the inability to meet your desired or intended objectives generally speaking is regarded as failure word number three favor what is favor 
and um maybe i may dwell a bit here just trying to explain a few things because our general mainstream definition of favor especially in the body of christ is very limited it does not bring out the substance especially when it has to do with favor with men generally we define favor as unmerited access you know and that is right we define favor as grace that is right but let me give you three definitions of favor very quickly number one favor means help full stop favor means what help h-e-l-p help whether divine or human favor means help still defining favor what is favor god and men contributing to ensure that you succeed what is favor god and men contributing to ensure that you succeed that's favor when god comes into partnership with you when men come into partnership with you to ensure that you succeed then you are said to be a favored person god and men contributing to ensure that you succeed number three what is favor men investing their time credibility and resources to help you achieve your goals what is favor men investing their time men investing their credibility men investing their resources to help you achieve your goals when a man invests his time that's favor when a man endorses you puts his reputation and credibility on the line to make sure you rise that's favor when men invest their resources be it spiritual financial whatever it is to help you achieve your goals that's favor never forget these three definitions they are powerful definitions word number four grace let's define grace word number four grace i wrote something down i had to tear it out of my little note i want to read it for you one day i was inspired and i wrote it down about grace just pay attention as i listen as i read grace as understood by many is seen as unmerited access listen to me this very confusion exaggeration over the powerful concept of grace stems from this one definition okay the very confusion an exaggeration over the powerful concept of grace stems from this one definition a very correct and biblical definition but very limiting to define grace only as unmerited access is a correct definition it is biblical but it is very limiting and sometimes can be destructive grace this is what i define grace as no i will tell you just just listen to me i'm, I'm giving you my contemplations just listen grace is a multi-dimensional reality in the realm of the spirit and in the dealings of god with men that doesn't just refer to things unmerited but realities and provisions that are exclusively found or domiciled and access from god in christ in other words the definition of grace is not just limited to things unmerited but it is also anything that comes from god are we together now it is a generic expression that attempts to communicate a reality a provision a possibility of things not obtained from the earth realm but from god and only in and through christ now listen i wrote this down this definition allows for other dimensions of grace to be captured and experienced this morning the holy spirit okay this is me writing permit me i'm reading 
as i just wrote directly this morning the holy spirit himself gave me the best and most concise definition of grace i have ever heard and known and i'll tell you what the holy spirit told me about grace ready james 1 17 this is how the holy spirit defined grace for me james 1 17 please put it up for us very fast let's see how we can gain time james 1 17 this is the definition of grace read it one to read every good and perfect every good gift and every perfect gift that comes from above and cometh down from the father of light stop is called grace anointing is grace wisdom is grace promises achieved is grace anything that is not within the jurisdiction of the earth realm that requires coming down from heaven from the father of light and can only be available in christ and through christ is called grace let me finish this i wrote something down every good gift the word gift there please leave that scripture up let me just explain something the word gift there is the word dosis and it means the act of giving and every perfect gift is the word dorema which means the thing given so it talks about both the thing given and the act of giving are we together now then it says it's from above and all of that now this scripture shows that grace is not limited to gifts alone but the very act of communicating things from god to men is called grace are you getting my point now so that grace is not just a thing you collect the very act of communicating with god is called grace now i define grace for you write this down grace is the sum total grace is the sum total of any and all things made available to man by god comma i'll take it again grace is the sum total of any and all things made available to man by god but only in and through christ grace is the sum total of any and all things made available to man by god but only in and through christ so the anointing is an expression of grace prosperity is an expression of grace salvation is an expression of grace protection all of these things are expressions of grace look at me when you define grace only as unmerited access then there is no space for obedience to be featured in grace are you hearing what i'm saying now now when you obey and get results it is true that what god is giving you is unmerited in that you cannot receive it are we together now but being unmerited does not stop the fact that there are conditions to fulfill the cheapest thing we get is salvation and even salvation requires a response you use your mouth you use your hands you use your legs you use your tears there is a participation the gift is unmerited but the act of receiving is merited are we together whosoever calls on the name of the lord shall be saved whosoever does not call upon the name of the lord whosoever believes in him shall have life everlasting whosoever does not believe in him is condemned already these are the words of jesus please don't limit grace to just unmerited access uh -uh. grace is access definition number five let's hurry up works let's define works now that i've defined grace i have to define works because if i do not define works um then there will be a lot of confusion 
let me i also wrote something about works here listen to my contemplation about works and then we'll dictate works on the other hand should not be equated with action rather certain kinds of activities look up let me explain to you what i mean many times we have been taught the moment you hear the word works you just mean ah i'm not i don't have any works again you are joking you are joking we will work for the rest of our lives there is works works as defined in context to grace and in context to the old testament refers to certain kinds of activities that um were captured in the judaic laws and were captured in the commandments that were given to moses that men must do ceremonial activities to the end that they will be able to create a system of atonement for themselves that's what was abolished works is not the same as action action is still relevant for results do not equate works with actions the works of the law are different from works what was abolished was the works of the law i never will have to slaughter an animal again i never will have to mediate between a priest to help me reach god once and and forever christ has offered himself the veil has been torn that is true but to mean there is nothing else to do in terms of action in terms of obedience in terms of partnership in terms of participation is a joke the bible says we are saved by grace but that system works through faith and faith is not just believing and confessing is the summation of everything you do in obedience to fulfill the conditions that are tied to the results you desire it's called faith it's the word pistis it doesn't just mean conviction conviction first but the actions that are taken in partnership with that conviction to get a desired outcome what are works in the new testament every time we talk of works we mean one word obedience write it down works in the new testament is obedience works in the new testament is partnership please write this down every time we talk of works we are not talking about going back to the law ceremonial cleansings and all of these rituals that were captured in, in the Judaic law and then all the hilarious laws and the stringent conditions that the nation of Israel had to go through. That has been abolished once and forever. But obedience will always be a requirement. Always be a requirement. Partnership will always be a requirement. So works equal obedience to the believer today. Your partnership towards making promises manifest is what I call works. Your partnership towards making promises manifest is what we call works. We need to define this because I'm going to be playing around with these words. And um, it's important that all of us, when you hear it, you know what I'm saying. Number what now? Let's hurry up. I will rush now. Number six, excellence. Let's define excellence very quickly number six excellence what is excellence excellence means the highest level of quality available write it down the highest level of quality available is called excellence the highest level of quality available is called excellence another definition surpassing ordinary standards is called excellence so you are excellent to the degree to which you can produce the highest level of quality available. You are excellent to the degree to which you surpass ordinary standards. Can I continue? Next word. Mediocrity. What is mediocrity? The quality of being average. Mediocrity is the quality of being average please participate pay attention to these words the quality of being average what does it mean to be mediocre to be common what does it mean to be mediocre to be indifferent the quality of being average the quality of being common the quality of indifference what does it mean to be mediocre ordinary like everyone else ordinary like everyone else is the attitude of mediocrity 
average common indifference like everyone else next definition eight am i right number eight relationships what are relationships write this down relationships are advantageous connections simple relationships are advantageous connections broadly speaking connections but with respect to what we are dealing with advantageous connections everyone say advantageous connections say it inside and outside advantageous connections write this down usually mutually beneficial usually mutually beneficial so we are talking about advantageous connections this is my definition that is usually mutually beneficial that means all the parties involved in that connectivity should benefit relationships can be both divine and human write it down relationships can be both divine and human it is possible to have a relationship with god it's possible to have a relationship with satan it's possible to have a relationship with a demon spirit it's possible to have a relationship with the holy spirit advantageous connections number nine knowledge what is knowledge thank you jesus what is knowledge the gathering or acquisition of information the gathering or acquisition of information or facts that's called knowledge the gathering or acquisition of information facts is called knowledge many of you are tired of writing that's the secret to your peace just keep writing what is knowledge awareness of familiarity what is knowledge awareness or familiarity that is gained through education or experience what is knowledge again awareness or familiarity that is gained through experience or through education can i continue number 10 understanding the 10th terminology we are defining understanding what is understanding comprehension comprehension in one word understanding is comprehension Eleven, wisdom we're almost there Eleven, wisdom correct application of knowledge also means accurate application of knowledge write it down wisdom is the correct application of knowledge also refers to the accurate application of knowledge when knowledge is applied accurately and correctly it's called wisdom distant shores and the islands will see your light as it rises on us distant shores and the islands will see your light as it rises on us do you know what do you know what i'm imagining i'm just imagining how many of you buy me cars and houses and say apostle thank you thank you thank you no no look you will be too blessed to do it even if you don't like me you will do it you will turn back one day i'll come to your house and when others are languishing i will see you together with your children giving god praise and say today is a day off we are just worshiping and blessing his name and people will say are you in nigeria you say no i i am only here but we, we 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 sit on a throne and we manipulate things according to our order Remember I used to say this thing years ago. Believe it, oh. Believe it. 
I imagine you going to your mother and your father and saying, Mama, I know you did not make it in this life, but I have a surprise. Cover her eyes and take her somewhere and say, Mama, the car you did not drive, this is it. Let the devil do anything he would do. Do you think your mother will be happy? You are going to someone's house and you are seeing them want to tear your members clothes because of rent. I must kill you now. How much? 250,000. That's all right. That's all right. In two minutes, he's there. God bless you. Not alone. I pray that God will help you. God will make this happen. Someone will step into your home and see peace between you and your children and be born again there. No preaching. And say, This is what I've been fighting. This is what I'm teaching you. If you pay attention, I don't care what tribe, I don't care what background, I don't care what is happening or not happening in your life. You listen to this, you will arise. Number 12, prosperity. Let's define prosperity. What does it mean to prosper? It means to do well. Quickly, please. Prosperity means to do well. Prosperity means to excel. Prosperity means to flourish. Prosperity means to thrive. It means to do well. It means to excel. It means to flourish. It means to thrive. That's what it means to prosper. Two more definitions and we're there. Number 13. Goals. G-O-A-L-S. Goals. What are goals? Clearly defined desires, objectives, and outcomes. What are goals? Clearly defined desires, objectives, and outcomes. Clearly defined desires, objectives, and outcomes. 14, the last word. Value. V-A-L-U-E Value What is the definition of value? Write it down Point of difference What is the definition of value? Point of difference Another definition Your uniqueness Another definition Your skill So what is value? Your point of difference your uniqueness your skill write this down under value everything that constitutes an advantage in your life and is capable of blessing humanity and glorifying god is called value i repeat everything that constitutes an advantage in your life and is capable of blessing humanity and glorifying god is called value everything that constitutes an advantage in your life and is capable of blessing humanity and is capable of glorifying god is called value take a deep breath you have tried you have been writing some of you that's a key to drive laziness you've not done this in a long time I gave you 14 definitions that have controlled the destinies of many. I gave you 14 definitions that are capable of changing your life from tonight. I gave you 14 definitions that will be the key between your joy or your pain. Listen, I gave you 14 definitions that will make your church, your ministry, your group excel or fail. I gave you 14 definitions that will tell us what you will become. Write this down. Success is predictable. I don't need to see your results to know whether you will be successful. Success is predictable now. I can look at your life now and predict with digital precision whether or not you will succeed. There are people I look at their lives and I know they will fail. 
it's a very sad truth they will be offended and they will think he's proud are you god and then you see that you really fail failure is also predictable write it down so success is predictable semicolon failure is also predictable i can look at your life brothers and sisters and i can know that you are going to be a very powerful prayer warrior you are going to be a very great word addict but i know that as far as success is concerned you may not be very successful i can look at your life and i know that you are going to be a very rich man you will buy the jets and the rolls royces but you will never be a spiritual man i can look at your life and know that you may be a happy man in terms of finances but marriage you will pay a deep price i can look at your life I know you are going to be a very good husband but a very poor and broke man i can look at your life and know that you are going to be a very intelligent graduate but you may be jobless for the rest of your life or you may barely be employed and remain at the lower levels i can look at your life and know you will never rise to a managerial position listen the spirit realm is higher than the natural realm but it's not unpredictable we look at the clouds and we can forecast with a very commendable level of accuracy that there will be rain and it happens a pilot tells you we are landing at five minutes past one five minutes past one on the dot the tire is touching the ground we can we can tame our environment with that degree of accuracy what makes you think you need money in your account to prove you are successful i can look at you now and know that even if one million is in your account it will run away as fast as it came You know years ago as i began to pursue the things of the spirit i stumbled across materials that taught on this i folded them with speed and threw them one side I felt, look let me press on this how foolish i was imagine that i came for koinonia now and after preaching a powerful message i now tell you all of you you are going to sow my mind is not stable I'm, i need i need you have to pay my rent i'm blessing you the Bible says A and B and C. Everybody stand up. Worship team, you are bringing 50,000. Prayer band, you are bringing 1 million. <laughs> Benga, <laughs> you are not praying for nothing. 1 million. Leaders, you are bringing 2 million. Oh, what a cost way of leadership. You will never bless anybody being a nuisance that way. God did not send me to be a nuisance to you. He sent me to bless you. Yes. It will never happen in this ministry. Where I will say, please, raise offering for me so that I can eat well. No. You know what we call escape velocity in physics? Where you have gone past certain things. It's not pride. It will never happen again till Jesus comes. I found my way to better days. I found my way to better days. For many of you tonight, you're on your way to better days. Let them laugh at you. You're on your way to better days. Status is Prophesy to yourself.
prayer for one minute and say Lord I am truly changing I'm not just motivating myself for nothing there is a way that can lead a man out of misery there is a way that can lead a man out of a life of pain there is a way that can lead a man to the wealthy place there is a way that can lead a man to a life of impact a life of dignity a life of beauty a life of peace a life of glory please sit down thank you sit down our time is gone let me teach for a few minutes and then we'll pray now we've had all the peripherals please listen i want to teach you you just sang that you are on your way to better days for some of you you were joking for some of you you were emotional but for a few of you you meant it you know why let me ask all of you now in one minute i want you to cast your mind at the worst thing you have seen happen to you and your parents for some of you is that you were thrown outside for some of you is that you had admission but there was no money to pay it for some of you is that you had to go and sleep with somebody somewhere to raise ten thousand and bring back home to eat for some of you is that you even found yourself in occultic groups because you wanted charm for protection or success for some of you there are men of god probably listening to me you have had to under pressure join fraternities because you are hoping that it will give you ministry connection listen if you don't do anything about your success failure will force you to do wrong things if you don't do anything about your success failure will force you to do wrong things when i look at people who say god forbid over my dead body i will never do this and that i tell them keep quiet you don't know the pressure that failure forces people pressure can make you do things you never imagined you will do i've shared with you here i think it's in koinonia years ago when i counseled a lady whose situation broke my heart and it motivated my appetite to understand its success her mother true story her mother was working with a boss and the father i think was not working and then they got to a point in their life where they were stranded and i don't know if it was whatever it is but it was a very serious issue and the woman went to the boss to plead if she could have a raise in her salary to allow her cater for the needs of the family being the chief burden bearer which is very wrong of the entire family and according to what the lady told me she said the boss looked at her own mother and said you are not a, a small girl you know what to do if you want to raise someone's mother matured lady you know what to do and the mother initially refused but when she went to meet the father the situation the pressure was overwhelming both of them agreed that the mother should go and sleep with the man now yeah, i know you are we, are we have we can shout in church ah, i won't do it don't talk like that because the person who did it is not an idiot when somebody sits down with the head of a goat all through the night he never planned it that's what pressure me when the girl told me that do you know what happened do you know that after the man paid that woman her money the shame she had to still quit the job and leave when the lady told me i said oh god what is this we are here jumping in church saying since i was young now i am old i have never seen the righteous forsaken that is such a lie i've seen many righteous people forsaken oh i've seen many of their seed beg for bread we sing it by faith and i believe it but i have seen many righteous people such as our parents such as your brother and your sister you know them they love god they have been dejected and forsaken they forsook loves and good things left them. success is predictable 
failure is predictable. You can make up your mind from today that you are going to start a journey that will lead you into a dimension of success. You can make up your mind today that you are going to begin in, in a way and a dimension that you have never seen. To obey these laws and excel. Let's start with at least one or two of the laws for tonight. Ready? The laws of success. Thank you, Jesus. Ready? The first law of success, the law of relationships. Write it down. The law of relationships. Ignore this and suffer for the rest of your life. Embrace this and watch your life change as though you are holding a charm. Everybody say the law of relationships. Shout it. The law of... Write this down. Success is highly relationship dependent. Success is highly relationship dependent. Your success and my success in life is highly relationship dependent. Number two, everything money can buy, relationships can buy it. Write it down. Everything, I don't care what it is, anything at all that money can buy, relationship can pay for it. Money can buy a house, relationships can buy a house. Money can help you build a church relationship can help you build a church listen money as you know naira and cobalt dollars pounds yen these things are not the only means of exchange relationship is currency you can use it to pay for things relationship is currency you can use it to pay for things there are many ignorant people who want to be successful but they do not know the law of relationships so they have to look for money to pay for everything you ask them and they tell you i need five million i need ten million whereas the relationship you have is worth billions of naira in value and it is capable of paying for anything money can pay for there are people who have had to pay hundreds of thousands in a seminar and another person relationship paid for it and he entered free are we together now there are people who have had to pay for rent and others relationship has been paying their rent there are people who have had to pay for everything in life listen if you use money to buy everything in life you are not wise no. it is a total display of lack of wisdom to use finances to get everything in life it has nothing to do with being rich that's the mistake our parents made i love our parents don't get me wrong some of you here are parents we love you we honor you with all our hearts most people think you only succeed when you start having salary hundred thousand coming and they now say wow i have hundred thousand then they have a need they ignore relationships and something that would be cheaply paid for they would have to look for money and pay for it i have paid for many things in my life using relationship relationship like a debit card you can use it and withdraw many other things you can use it and pay for many other things relationships today by the grace of god has given me platforms i am connected to people listen connectivity is a key to success you must be connected relationships can help you access anointings relationships can help you access endorsements relationships can help you access favor 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 
the major ingredient in success is favor but it takes relationships we have come with open arms oh let the ancient words hallelujah there are things in my life i would have paid for financially let me give you an example this great auditorium an act of kindness and benevolence by cgc we have never paid a single couple for this venue and some of you who are into real estate know if you value this and we have to pay every week for all of this imagine the millions of naira that relationship has made for yes. something in your life that you are hoping to change today is relationship dependent something a dimension in your life you must enter now is relationship dependent unfortunately for many of us all we know is just love relationship husband and wife somebody who likes a lady a lady likes him back that, that's only an aspect of it your relationship with god is a key to your success correct you excel in life on the strength of your relationship with god the healthier your relationship with god the healthier your relationship with the spirit of god the greater your success. The prodigal son, please help me with the sound, please. The prodigal son made a big mistake. He broke relationship to look for money. Are you seeing the mistake of the prodigal son? Thank you. He, he jeopardized the potential for relationship. He had a relationship with his father. And on the strength of his relationship with his father, he did not pay for food. He did not pay for protection. But here's what he said. I don't want relationship. I rather want money. And he ended relationship and got money. What happened to the money? Without relationships, your finances will always be finite. There is only so much. Relationship is the secret of continual financial flow. Relationship is the secret. It is relationship that will keep finances i'm not talking about finances necessarily but i'm just using it as a case study relationships people have blessed me today purely based on relationships not even as in the capacity as a, of, of a man of god just to bless do you know that somebody in zaria today has the heart to bless you but you do not have the connection are you hearing what I'm saying now? Somebody has the capacity to pay for your rent without begging and without lying. Somebody has the capacity to give you free land purely based on relationship. During my birthday, people did things for me that almost brought tears from my eyes. I, I usually am not into celebrating birthdays and the rest. The leaders did something touching. Different people did things, but there were certain strategic blessings and things they were done that I said, God, what is this? What is this? Relationships. Relationship can give you access to realms where your physical qualification should not allow you to enter there many of us have been trivializing relationships that's why we keep hustling the bible says the labor of the fool where yet every one of them he does not know the road to the city by the grace of god i understand the ministry of destiny helpers the ministry of destiny helpers is futile without relationship god has used me as a destiny helper to many god has used many people as destiny helpers to me hallelujah cheap victories that many of us lose cheap victories some of our parents do not know anybody and so you pay for everything and when you want to use money alone to be successful a day will come you will have all the money in your life and you'll find out that there are some things money cannot do are we together there are people you know one of the greatest this is one of the greatest lessons that i've learned from my father my father is
is a man who was wealthy in relationships i used to think he was just you know you know just someone who just likes people but now that i've grown i have seen the wisdom relationship paid many bills for my father relationships let me tell you something relationship is an investment the same way you invest in business is the way you invest in relationship all this something for nothing is, is a joke there are many of us we have this self flattery they don't like me you don't call me i won't call you sit down there the day you need the person you don't call that's when you know relationships are important relationships are very serious value adding investments there are times you will call your destiny helper he will not respond there are times you will send him 100 naira credit there are times you will say sir just to appreciate you you will take out time to compose a text message as if you would die there and he will just send you one word god bless you but it's working the day you now ask for help you have set a template there are people today if you ever see their text they are begging the moment the need is met they forget the relationships until the day a need arises uncle it's me again no it's junior say hey, i know you are junior what is the issue say uncle you know i mean i'm in 400 level now honestly he said are you the first to be there you are matured enough to start working uncle we are we are traveling somewhere we are going so and he says don't be stupid don't you ever call my line again most of you when you call your helpers this is what they tell you it's only when you have trouble that you call me anytime anybody tells you that you need to strengthen your relationship many of us have very bad relationship maintenance systems for as long i know many great people sadly some of them even great people i know they don't know how to keep relationships at all anytime you see their call one missed call two missed call they're in trouble they need a favor they need a help some of you are born again tongue talking but you are like that and you have closed doors closed doors your friend is celebrating a birthday you can never remember say i'm too busy are we together now your your whatever it is i'm too busy hey, Jimmy is my friend i love him and you know sometimes you see him and the wife and the two children of course um not everybody will have access to come and visit me that's the privilege of friendship nobody is born with intimacy by default you walk your way into it listen i am a busy person it is true there are many people who say apostle i've been trying to see you what what ordinance do i have to see you what covenant do i have with who to see you i've been trying to see you you are not attending to me that's a foolish statement you should ask yourself those who have unlimited access what are they doing that's the key in time past there were offices i tried to access i've shared with you my story years ago when i went to look for a loan i won't tell you the amount i went to look for a loan in a bank these people wasted my time and did all kinds of things and i found out i had brain capital but no relationship capital and i made up my mind some of us the fire is getting hotter by the day and you think the key is to get a job quickly find relationships do you know there are people who are not working but relationship is paying them salary every month until they get a job yes sir i know people like that my mother has a relationship with me forever my father has a relationship with me forever my siblings have relationships with me forever as i rise they rise it's called blessed by association listen once the easiest way to be rich is to find somebody building something great and invest quickly and help the person rise and as you rise chop i chop i'm teaching you listen there you see the body of christ people there, there are many foolish people in the body of christ you watch people when they are starting you are the first to run your mouth i don't believe in them now you have access to them there are people years ago they had access to me they would have been some of the closest people to me today enjoying every blessing but they just saw it today now do you know the door you enter kicking your leg tomorrow you will feel a form so now that god gives you the opportunity there are people who use 50 naira to secure a relationship that is worth millions today 
that's wise investment the day that great man was looking for water you quickly carried your 50 naira the bible gives us a parable i don't have time in the bible where a man oh listen a man was about to be sacked by a king are we together and he knew he was in trouble he had been defrauding people a tax collector now they were going to throw him away do you know what he did he quickly called the people and said how much do you owe so so amount i reduce it for you ah and the moment they sat him he went back to them i scratch your back scratch my own too now this is a system that the world uses but believers don't know this koinonia is very connected to several people you see us connected to the military we are connected to the police we are connected to medical personnel we are connected to politicians because you rise through a network of relationships you don't know which it's not just about being selfish it's the way it happens relationships everybody shout relationships some of us if our parents knew this some of them their classmates today are the ministers in charge of abc no relationship to bless them is that true do you know there are people who sit down today and calls just come they call them one old day. Ah, promise where are you I'm, I'm i'm trusting god for what come 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 there's create one committee that doesn't make sense and say sit down there you are the chairman in charge of it after, when god helps you after seven months they say okay that's all right it's dissolved just because you must be blessed ask mephibosheth how he paid for royalty relationships a man who was crippled are you learning what i'm ask the disciples how they became apostles relationship even when they ran away for three days when jesus resurrected they quickly apologized lord i'm sorry i'm still on your team and they became apostles are you hearing what i'm saying many of you right here you come for koinonia all the time and you have a a resentful attitude this brother you are not you are not my class you are not wearing my shoe rather than for you to sit down and say ah this brother is always taking notes god is taking him somewhere he may have one trouser two hundred naira one shoe one whatever but what is entering his spirit is programming him for greatness some of you resent every other person who is not you you are losing you are losing big time in life just this law alone will bless you i am i am i am a benefactor of relationships by the grace of god god has connected our ministry with all kinds of people oh, there is there is nothing at this level by the grace of god there is nobody within our sphere of influence that we want to meet that we cannot meet it's impossible somebody knows somebody do you know statistically they say you are four people away from anybody you want to meet four people four people there are others who will invite a guest minister in the capacity of his office and pay one million honorarium someone else because of relationship he said no 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 whatever you know i mean we are together i pray for you from the depth of my heart that the the power of relationships will show in your life from today please sit down many times you see an old woman carrying firewood on her head firewood that is as heavy as five men she puts it on her head walking the question i ask is where are her relationships this mama is 70 years she spent 70 years on earth and you cannot build a relationship with one successful person listen if you are up to 25 years hearing me and there is no one successful person in your life you are really failing hear what i'm saying you are really failing there is nobody to run to when things go bad there are people like that you are a pastor you want to hold a convention and you are stranded financially nobody in your circle of influence has reason to say please sir cover my shame for me relationships cover your shame 
relationships cover your shame who is standing in for you who is helping you rise you go to an oil company holding your certificate and you knock at the gate and the gate man says yes say i prayed and god led me to come and submit my cv he says bring it as he collects it he throws it inside a dustbin and you go back rejoicing and keep seeing visions of yourself working in an oil company till you are past the age that they will receive you because there's no relationship another unbeliever let me tell you this and i say this sincerely this is one secret that muslims have relationships relationships you will hardly see a muslim child go somewhere that his father cannot create that's why some of course I, I i love them we love muslims and all of that and you find out that there are some of them you see them in your schools they, don't, they are not even serious because they know that relationship has already had they had the degree before they started so this is just a ceremony for all of that to happen because relationship has created a degree somewhere there is a space that has been created since they were in 200 level waiting for them to occupy but believers don't have that wisdom i show you the life of god versus the principles of god are we together there is no day in my life that relationship does not bless me there is no day i say it may god forgive me if i'm lying but it's true there is no day in my life that relationship does not bless me you cook by yourself you wash your clothes by yourself you intercede for yourself no relationship nobody seen anything about you to pray for you by yourself you are looking for favor by yourself they drive you alone you walk alone you counsel yourself you motivate Abba. say relationships say the law of relationships i made a statement years ago and i repeat it every once and again that we will all be great right and the greater part is that we will all know ourselves praise god sorry about that some of you here um will never have any helper do you know why you are anti-friendship your persona is anti-friendship you are resentful you are rude you are callous you are very very offensive in your approach turn and tell one another good evening and somebody turns and you're looking at the person you are not my class stop that oh listen he that wants friends must first show himself humble yourself in this training ground where nobody knows who is who it's only god that knows whose destiny you see me hug people here some of you see me hug our little children and you think that uh, i'm just hugging them i will continue to hug them because at their age you were not thinking like them that means most likely they will be better than us at age 12 some of us were absolutely foolish these children at age 12 pray in tongues love god join prayer department some of them i mean look at a destiny like an arrow and you are missing an opportunity to invest you now come when it's too late when the person has become a big man do you know there are people who call my phone all the time sending insults and saying apostle uh, whatever it is they call you you are claiming you don't know me i say i don't know you i don't know you i don't know you don't bully me i don't know you listen when you celebrate a great man when he's great it's too late mm. you came way too late you don't celebrate greatness when greatness manifests you celebrate greatness in the process you participate in it that's why i'm excited for you because i have the privilege of participating in your success how in the world can i fail listen with all humility there are people today by the grace of god that i have raised who will never allow me beg for bread till jesus comes even if i decide to be careless and i i stop obeying any law of lifting 
you have sat down on on a you know how they do what they call it uh, um, let me not talk business here all those uh, businesses that you do you sit down you bring somebody and you keep rising that's how you can sit on a chair and keep rising like that forever because you paid the price to build someone are you hearing what i'm saying now question whose destiny are you investing in today question who will remember you when he gets to the throne if you are not there when i'm in the cave don't expect to be there when i'm on the throne if you were not there when i was on the cave don't expect to be featured there are, there are many lousy people in the body of christ with an entitlement mentality you hear them say i knew you i knew where you were not in what did you do about it when i was walking my way when i was hungry did you ever give me water you were part of those grumbling and talking and now that rejected stone has become the chief cornerstone you are now seeing the man of god in glory and power and you are saying we are colleagues we are not colleagues no sir listen be careful and don't let men bully you with their complacency and their inability to invest in your relationship anybody who does not think you are worth a good relationship should not be found in your future there are people listen i'm rounding up there are some of you many people who would have lifted you look at you now and they think you are failures because of what is happening they gist about you sometimes you hear it sometimes they say it to your face but they don't know what it is that is happening and then when you rise you see them come with entitlement mentality you should give me a house you should give me a car and you ask them why they say because i knew you before no sir everybody who believed in me when i was nothing is impossible for them to fail in life because they took a risk by believing in someone they never saw any result and now their risk is yielding dividends so it is not wickedness when you see somebody bless somebody there are people in my life no matter how foolish and stupid they become i'm bound to them forever because they believed in me when i was nothing rejoice not over me my enemies for though i fall yet i will rise again are you hearing what i'm saying some of you in the whole of your family nobody believes in you they've told you to your face you will not amount to anything obey these laws and watch god shock every one of them to their knees apostle i want to be blessed what are you doing i just need hundred thousand to start a business who fooled you that that's all it takes to succeed you see that you have two tiers of rice in your house it can pay for a growing relationship you can cook food invite five of your friends and say look just to honor you guys i know that i don't have much now but i just love you after 10 years they will tell you remember that our rice now enter this five-star hotel let's now eat my own version of the rice and someone looks at you listen someone looks at say and say you you shouldn't be in the palace you say i paid for it since i paid for the palace when i could afford it i show you wisdom keys that men are using to climb ladders of greatness so you can see somebody in the future come you see somebody in the future no charisma no anointing yet favor will never stop leaving him everybody knows him we're about leaving be that today and a man of god who also came for administration the man of god came for administration i was about to enter the car let's go and then um the protocol stopped me and said please i need to attend to him i turned to him and i said hello sir i don't know you he said sir you don't need to know me i came for administration and i had you were around i stopped the guy was holding a seat in his hand say relationships there are people who will be talking who should we lift here and somebody will say please i have one daughter I have one son not my biological child but this child is so well well mannered very lovely person the person did not read this cost but that person has character and say send for that person quickly you see people who read something that has no business with what they are doing yet they keep rising to be directors relationships keep promoting them tonight we are going to pray I will stop here Lord one will continue the remaining next week
there are plenty laws i will share with you the easiest way to succeed is to invest in relationships relationship is a stream of income when you are writing all your streams of income write relationships it will cost you now because under relationships you don't sell anything you give for free sometimes you need to be a fool investing in relationships some of you after this meeting you need to go and sit down and say lord who are the five most valuable people in my life and start calling them sometimes you don't even need five you just need one and say sir do you know there are people in my life who send credit all the time they don't have much it may be hundred naira. i'm not saying you should do it but i see the passion they are making to establish a relationship with me billy graham we talk about billy graham as the great evangelist do you know one of the reasons why he was great he had endorsements of every president before that happened it was said every time billy graham would write letters to members of parliament and the president of the united states wanting meeting with them they would throw away the letter he kept doing it and one day just one person attended to him a day will come the door will open don't think you will knock once and it will open you see the thing about relationship is that because of what you are looking for sometimes it will have to sting your ego don't be embarrassed pay the price that's the price for the value you are looking for i see a number of men of god sometimes they want to see me maybe for a meeting and they come once twice and say please what is the big deal about this one please we are all equal before god and i say what an unwise person i have pursued men with anointings i have humbled myself i have stayed for weeks and months just to encounter people and the encounter was not more than two minutes because of value i have pursued uncommon mentors i have spent money i have sown seeds i still sow seeds into the lives of people to maintain relationship what have you done that you are complaining there are people just to stand after service and be patient everybody's pulling their mouth it's too late apostle i need to see you specially um, um and i say look look I, I may not have all the time and then you see them frowning Abba, let's respect value no great man needs you you are the one who needs him so you must pay the price pay the price when i meet people who have what i look for i don't go as apostle joshua selman if it means me sweeping the office you've heard my testimony of when i wanted to take a trip to the u.s to go and scrub the toilet of charles and francis hunter i was not going there as colleagues i wanted to go and scrub their toilets for two weeks it pained me when they died and i didn't meet them relationships how do you travel to u.s to go and scrub toilet if you can you snap yourself scrubbing toilet and put on facebook and say it is the lord's doing most people who don't understand this will say look at how this person is disgracing himself never be embarrassed to invest in quality destiny relationships there are useless relationships that are going nowhere cut them this night i release the grace on you there are people who are going nowhere and they are forcing you you come around them you don't love god you don't think you don't plan you don't do nothing and they say two weeks you've not leave them all love is a command relationship is not choose your friends it is within your power if you are not going where i'm going i love you but you have to stay we can greet in church we can greet around but you cannot be my destiny friend not having my convictions a man who has to make you change your conviction in his presence is not a destiny friend leave them who are you believing in right now that you have not seen anything in their life who are you believing right now some of these people some of them are outside they may be sitting smelly clothes they can't afford perfume torn clothes but they are receiving you can reject them because of the privilege that you have and tomorrow you did not know that that was your governor you were kicking away oh jerusalem jerusalem you did not know your time of visitation your time came and you allowed it to pass you we are going to cry to god tonight father i want to engage the law of relationships stand up please pray rise up on your feet i like you to
to thank God for this message. We just started introducing it tonight. Lift your hands and thank God. Open your mouth and say, God, thank you. You are revealing to me the keys. 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 Someone calls you and says, please come. Let me give you something to pay the rent of your family. The moment that statement happens, the devil makes sure that the man receives a call that is an emergency call. Are you seeing that now? And he leaves the office. You arrive at the office, you find out the door is locked. He says, if the young man comes, just give him 2,000 to go back. It's a lie. The man did not leave. Something happened. There is a spirit behind that operation. How many of you have gone to, to seek people over something that is so simple? Maybe just a signature and it will take two weeks, three weeks. You believe it's normal? And then sometimes a man of God may pray for you and speak and you go back and the person who should not be there in the afternoon is now there. He was not there. An angel kept him there. This is how this kingdom operates. Your destiny helper, the destiny helper of your family can be two blocks away from you. But because there is no spiritual connection, my brother and my sister, you can stay 15 years. Whereas the person ordained by God to lift you is just two blocks. You will go to America and return back like a thief. You will go to UK and return back like somebody that God hates. But the day God decides to locate you, you will be surprised. Is God speaking to us? That's why we are here tonight. You can be a man of God and like the gentleman who listened to discerning the body. Probably God has been telling you, look, your ministry will never grow until you receive a word of impartation and prophecy but you'll be surprised how you'll be planning for five years i will come for koinonia you will now say next week you will say kai uh, ah i'm feeling cold let me just relax as soon as you want to travel your sister will just say ah, i just came on break let me tell you all those acting is a lie but there's something about the will of man the day you stamp your feet and say today I name today as my day of breakthrough. The Bible said today if you hear his voice, every day becomes your today until the day your faith says no tomorrow again. It has to be today. Are we together? So tonight, I don't want you to sit down and waste your time. You are hearing people testify. My brothers and my sisters, I tell you by the grace of God, there is enough grace and power to turn your life to bring any it's not very difficult no it's just your connection stop the arguments the war that is happening in your head can god do this you can't leave lagos leave the east leave the north and come and sit down you are wondering you believe that god brought you to waste your time no sir no sir i tell you in a moment in a twinkling of an eye oh can can the hepatitis go can this go? We are talking God here. We are not talking the, the chief consultant of a, a, a hospital. The God of heaven. Can that yoke go? We are nine people in our family apostle. Nobody has a job. It's not about the job. The devil has seen that in the job of those nine people is the bread of maybe 30 children. Those nine people, the money from those nine people who empower a church to preach and save somebody who will become a mighty man and for the sake of that mighty man those nine people will remain poor it's not about the family hallelujah if satan had his way he will kill me crumble this ministry make every koinonia message around the world to disappear all of a sudden in everybody's phone if he can do that he can beat his chest and say I've tried ah but there's a song that says Satan shame unto you yes, 
You know the song? Don't sing it, oh. <laughs> we make our boast in the Lord. In the next few minutes, we are going to so rubbish the devil in this place. Let me tell you. First of October, we'll let, we'll let the devil know what is in Nigeria. He has tasted what is in America, what is in Russia, what is in this. And then you see your life change. A miracle is a wonder. That, that the limit. Oh, hold his hands. Try to stop him. Two of you. You know that game they used to play? That you try. Oh, yeah. Do it now. You are. I, don't, no, don't, don't draw him too much. Sorry. You are not very kind. Now, watch this. Are you seeing that now? This guy can be growing old every year. You are celebrating birthday and nothing is moving in your life. Because there is a devil somewhere determined to make sure you don't rise. Let me tell you my assignment. This is me now coming into this equation. My, my assignment is not to cut what is there. My assignment is to carry this like this, this one. Because, you see, I can cut what is there and pass. You can enjoy breakthrough while you are about to go. He's going to hold you and say, come back. Apostle has gone. So the, the job has not been done. My assignment by the grace of God is to carry this mountain you are seeing and carry it out of the way. One, that's number one. That's not all. Then my assignment is to turn you to the direction. That's where prophecy is powerful. And then turn what would have come to you from that delay. If I leave you like this, you are not oppressed, but you, are, you still don't have breakthrough. You are free from oppression, but you have not entered your inheritance. So you can't testify. But whatever that is, when it comes to you and you go to it, and then I leave you, my job is to... And, and the thing is that all these things happen through words. The word that is sent to supervise and make sure you get to your inheritance. And then by next week, you are coming with an employment letter and you are on your knees saying, God, what is this? What is this? Then two weeks later, five people, all barren in your family, are saying, ah, I, I, I think I'm pregnant. Then you just remember, ah, what has happened? A man of God that you have space for 500 people in your church and yet you see 10 people, 15. During a convention, they grow to 30 by the time service is finishing, there's 20 back. And all of a sudden, something happens. And one spectacular miracle happens by the next Sunday. In a way that even the critics say, I'm here in your church today to watch what happened. And you said, I never believed I would buy canopy for an overflow. But the anointing. God brought you here to change your life. Listen to me. I repeat, God brought you here to change your life. He didn't bring you to just be happy that a program koinonia. No. This is a miracle service. A miracle service is not a teaching service. I will take out time and teach you, but this is a miracle service. There are some of you, you may not be sick, you may not be oppressed, but you need to carry something that ends every argument. Result, my brothers and my sisters, is the end of every argument. I can lie to you. Or you can deceive me that you are having a pocket square. And I can argue because I'm not seeing it. But if you bring out a pocket square and I see it, this is the end of the argument. It would be stupid to still argue. At that point, you will let everybody know you are a madman. This is the result. Could it be that you have been talking too much? Let the anointing talk. I, I, will, I will build the house. I know God is faithful. I will do this. And God is saying, no. Moses only spoke small. And then the rod kept talking. You have been talking forever. Some of you, you are here in this meeting because there is a rod that God will give you. You stood before the Red Sea for forever. It refused to part. But God brought you here to carry something that you go back with it and it will shock you my brothers and my sisters that that red sea will part and you will call your family and say finally we've been wondering how to build a bridge but we found an easier road that the river can part 
tonight i want you to know that god wants to do this number one because he loves you but number two there is a dimension of glory only your results can bring to him don't ever let anyone fool you hearing is our father glorified john 15 and verse 8 this is how i am glorified galatians chapter 1 verse 29 says and they glorified god in me not that they glorified god on the throne they looked at my life they saw that god can do this you no father no mother who gave you the job who did you know from the top you're a man of god i used to know your father as a wheelbarrow pusher and you say my brother is what god can do if it is the lord's doing it is marvelous For as long as your life is ordinary, your ministry is ordinary, your business is ordinary, you will continue to explain and explain and argue and explain and explain and explain. Let me tell you, God takes away shame from our lives by giving us results. Did you hear what I said? God does not take away shame by explaining anything to anybody. He does something in your life and he does it in a way like Julius Berger will build a house and put B. God will do it and put his signature. They'll say, no, this business cannot be human. I hear testimonies of people every time. The things that God does in and through their lives a wonder please let your heart be open no don't let the devil make you come here and waste your time whether you are outside overflow one overflow two overflow three online whatever nation you are following just listen i believe him i may not claim i know everything about him but this god when god decides to stand up from his throne he said now arise from your throne god can stand up have you heard that the earth is his footstool so when he decides to stand up and say who has made the cry of my daughter to continue coming the bible says even the mountains keep like lambs my god is mighty our own belief many times is the reason why god does not move we come and sit down and pile up some of you have come with all kinds of forms and pictures and that's wonderful but you are there wondering can you move oh god concerning my money can you move concerning my money can you move concerning my health can you move concerning my wife and god is saying yes i can i am willing and i'm able and then the devil comes very quickly and says if god could move did the man of god pray for you in by march didn't your pastor fast seven days for you and you say it's true oh, that's the devil tonight your faith must be open your faith must rise to the heavens to say lord i don't want to leave this place just knowing i'm blessed i want to know what happened to me i want to hold a substance god is speaking to someone here this this sharing the grace and say ah were you blessed oh my god miracle service was powerful that's not a blessing no you can hold on to something and know that i left this place what happened the pain is gone i left this place what happened that before the grace is shared you check your phone and all of a sudden a text that you have been waiting for for five years now that's an evidence this is what we are talking about all of a sudden you are sitting down while you are seeing me preach you have been trusting god for that prophetic grace and while the preaching is going all of a sudden your eyes are open you are saying so this is what apostle is saying and you are seeing the power of god touching somebody and then you hear me say there's someone here and you're saying my god i've gotten this elisha knew when he got it elisha knew when he got it he went to the sea where is the lord god of elijah and the river parted you are trusting god for the grace for revelation that before the meeting is over all of a sudden scriptures it's as if it's an injection from your spirit you are just connecting one revelation to this and you're saying I, I can't remember studying this 
and then you discern that something is happening something is happening that heaviness has gone where is the fear yesterday night i couldn't sleep the fear of death is gone listen philemon chapter 1 and verse 6 says that the communication of your faith might become effectual through the acknowledging of every good thing that is in you in christ if you don't expect it and you don't pay attention to it if i ask this gentleman to give me water i'm expectant i'm not expecting a handkerchief i'm expecting water anything i see that looks like water is attracting my attention a double-minded man let that man not think he will receive anything from god thank god for people falling and flying up and down but your eyes is stayed like a flint lord i left lagos this morning and i came here i left bielsa and i came here my car almost had an accident lord i would have been in a convention now as a man of god i left it to be here i'm looking for something let something come from heaven and your hunger is like a force that is drawing something from heaven and all of a sudden boom i tell you in one minute I remember many years ago when I was standing in the rain at Bonke Crusade. There were crowds of people like this. I didn't know what who wore. Whether you wore red or green or blue. My eyes were fixed. Lord, what did you give this man that made every nation to open to him? What kind of man is this that no one criticizes him? Abba. I didn't just go there to receive anointing for miracles alone. No. When it came, I knew that I got it. I knew that I got it. Listen, my brothers and my sisters, you can know that the load has been lifted. You can know that the prayer has been answered. You can know that the project is a done deal. Are we together? The grace is here. More than available for you. And whilst we begin to pray, don't just watch others receive. Be sensitive. You are the one who knows what you are here for. Are we together? In one minute, I'd like you to open your mouth and cry. Mention specifically, why are you here? Talk to the Lord. Please pray. Please pray. Pray with all your heart. Lord, I had a young man testify that you gave him properties. I had a young lady, born, had never smelled. She was not in a miracle service, just listening to a message. And all of a sudden, the healing power of God touches that lady and that's it. Lord, I'm tired of this lump. Lord, I'm tired of this medical report. I'm tired of watching my mother cry, my father cry. I'm tired of my ministry not growing. I'm tired of staying at a particular level in the anointing. Lord, I've heard testimonies of favor. I have an idea of what happens when a man is carrying favor. But Lord, I don't see it yet in my life. I'm here tonight for this one reason. Lord, even after the deliverance series, I've been seeing certain things happen in my life and my family. That pre-informs me that I will still need a second touch. A second touch over my family. My loved ones are not born again. Lord, I can't watch them go to hell like this.
Don't be tired of praying. Please cry from the depth of your heart. Lord, I'm not going back with this disease. I'm not going back with this medical report. No way. No way. No way. I insist. I'm not going back barren. Tired of miscarriages. the universe what can you do what can you do Jesus you're the name above every other name what can you change what can you change Jesus one more time creator Creator of the universe, what can you do? What can you do, Jesus? I want you to see the Lord lifting your burdens. You're the name above every other name. What can you change? What can you change, Jesus? You are able, great and mighty God. You are able, Jesus. You are I will continue to read it for you Isaiah chapter 61 please give it to us the messianic prophecy Jesus's own manifesto he's saying this is what I came to do Isaiah 61 it says the spirit of the Lord we are reading from verse 1 to 4 is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek he had sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives. Start looking for your own as I'm reading. And the opening of the prison to them that are bound. Verse 2. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all those that mourn. 3. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. To give them beautiful ashes. The oil of joy for mourning. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. That they might be called the oaks of righteousness. The planting of the Lord that he might be glorified. For And they shall build the old wastes. They shall raise up the former desolations. They shall repair waste cities, he says. The desolations of many generations. I'd like you to pray. Whatever needs to be fixed in your life and family, insist that tonight is the night when it will happen. Overflow one, pray. Overflow two. Overflow three, by the roadside. Those following from around the world, open up your heart and pray from the depth of your heart.
Alléluia. Alléluia. The Lord just showed me something like a train. You know, a speed train, not like we have it now. Just like a train, just passed like this. And I believe in my spirit that that is a typology of a grace for speed. Listen, we are going to pray now. And like I always say, you'll find out when I pray, you're going to see people running around in and out. Please just guide them and bring them out, ushers. Whether you are an usher or not, the ushers can only do so much. I want to pray. Once I pray that prayer, listen, please, I don't want you to get, listen, please, hold on. I don't want, it, the idea is not about people falling down, carrying them. Please, let your spirit be open. Be open for when your word will come. Be open for when God will visit and locate you. That, that's, that's what you're here for. So I want to pray that prayer now. I'm seeing a lot of those people at overflow one a lot of the people who will be affected by this prayer are in overflow one the overflow outside you see let me tell you this when a man listen when a man does not have speed in his life you don't have the entire lifetime to do all that you should do it it takes more than just power right Please help those in Overflow 1, my God. I'm seeing very strange angelic activities happening already at Overflow 1 outside. Now, listen. When there is no speed in your life, listen. Imagine that I have to walk from here to maybe the roadside and I'm tiptoeing on one leg. Am I moving? Yes, sir. But when will you arrive there? The pressure that you will mount on this leg, it will affect you to a point that you may not even stand it. And so God, when he wanted Elijah to move, because he had already been delayed, the Bible says the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah. He was empowered of the spirit and he ran. I, I, I'm, I'm saying this before I pray so that you don't just think it's about anointing and people running around. No. When that grace comes upon you, what God is saying is, I'm ready to shift you. That within a short time, you will see a lot happen in your life. In three days, the work of redemption was done. Three days. This powerful redemption did not happen in 12 years. It happened in three days. By the end of three days, Jesus had ascended, poured his blood, returned back. He was ready. He was now to launch the church. Big things don't have to take plenty time. When the hand of God comes upon you, you will see that a defining moment in your life can happen so fast. Are you ready now? Lift your hands. I want to pray. I will do the praying. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord is asking me to shout Jesus, not you now. I'm the one shouting Jesus. I'm going to shout it and at the third time, I tell you it's going to be an avalanche of the power of God. Let me have those people out. Lord, you are bringing speed to your people. And I know that there are angels all around. It's time to change people's levels. And even as you have instructed me, oh God, as I declare that name that is above every other name, I pray that anyone under the sound of my voice who has been crippled in one position, that in the name of the God of heaven, an anointing will shift that person into his destiny. Jesus, that's number one. Mm. Jesus, that's number two. Get ready now. Shabalakata. Jesus. Let that anointing right now. I shift men. Speed. Kabarakatosha. Speed to your life. Oh God, let every delay be broken now. I command the spirit of delay. Be broken. Speed. I shift you by the power of the Holy Ghost. Help that woman. Please help that mama there. Shakatoka tabarakata. 
please help them whether you are an usher or not speed speed in the name of jesus i command everything that has refused to move in your life i move it by the power of the holy ghost i'm still praying i'm still praying the holy ghost is moving you except this prayer is not for you there is an anointing that must shift you must shift you by the power of the holy ghost Lord shift them to their destinies please you will need to help the ushers whether you are an usher or not just, just help them there's only so much we can do there's no power that keeps you down this is miracle service lift your hands please I'm praying For some of you now, it's the same prayer, but it's no longer just for you. You may not be experiencing it, but your family needs speed. The anointing now is moving from individuals to families. Lord, where are the families that need the shift of the Holy Ghost? I decree and declare right now, I speak by this apostolic and prophetic grace. Families be shifted now. Speed, speed, speed. Speed, Kaparakoto Shegeta, Ebrekete, Kete, Kete, Kete. I decree it. I declare it. I decree it, and I declare it. Shapa Katoka Tabala Katosh. No more delay. I stretch my hands I'm seeing an angel of the Lord just on this road I stretch my hands right now I move people God is moving people here I decree it I declare I decree I declare I decree I declare by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus it must work for you I shift you no more delay in your life this lady wearing hijab right now the lord is shifting you that lady in the name of jesus i stretch my hands let the anointing of the spirit take away delay from your life right now in the name of jesus now all those in front i'm praying any chain that has tied anyone's leg or any family at the count of three i speak into the realm of the spirit those chains go now one two three go 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 i lose those families now I command chains be broken now let the families be set free in the name of Jesus young lady lift your hands you you put in your hand on your mouth. yes i'm seeing an angel pouring oil on you and the lord is saying that he's shifting things i'm seeing like a chain on your head being broken now i stretch my hands right now in the name of jesus let that chain be broken let that chain i command that devil i'm seeing a snake in the spirit let her go now in the name of jesus hallelujah be sensitive i want to pray a very serious prayer now he said behold i give you authority over snakes and scorpions 
if you don't like the prayer and pray no problem but i want to pray a dangerous prayer i'm seeing snakes this is what i'm seeing over families now let me tell you this reptilian objects is a representation of the spirit of sorcery in the name that is above all names i declare every spirit that has caged any family here i decree and i declare right now by the power of the holy ghost in the name of jesus and at the count of three everyone shout jesus as you shout jesus i see fire everywhere inside and outside there is massive deliverance about to happen i command every devil and every activity of sorcery to live now one two three in the name of jesus i cross satan i cross his works inside outside i command every power every force go now go now hallelujah please be sensitive just give me the volume i'm seeing fire by my left and right just bring out all the people that fall under the anointing now as i'm walking here in the name of jesus i command that devil you must go now you must go now you must go now i declare it by the anointing of the holy ghost as soon as i come close to you that fire and there is an anointing you can't stand it it's impossible as soon as i come close to you as soon as i come close to you that fire there is a judgment let them go now i'm coming this way right now in the name of jesus the power of god is coming this area this direction let them go now release them i come by the anointing of the holy ghost let them go now let them go now release them i'm seeing someone here tied around the stomach release them now let them go in the name of jesus let them go now by the power of the holy ghost i stretch my hands here right now the fire of god is setting people free now lose them lose them lose them lose them lose them lose them now lose them lose them in the name of jesus lose them now those outside lift your hands god is about to set you free please i like you to pray everyone pray enough is enough tonight everyone pray everyone pray now listen overflow one listen to me listen you don't have to touch me please you don't have to touch me but in the name of jesus hear me the lord brought me out here because the time has come for something to leave someone as soon as i pass here i don't have to come close to you you are going to feel fire all all over that fire that will be the end of it you must testify right now i stretch my hands right right now it's over over now Shakos Katanika, a Keto Santa Ricata, Empre Keto Seketa, a Kato Sekriaka, Manta Precotos. Let them go, let them go, let them go, let them go, let them go now. The spirit of sorcery, I cause it now. The spirit of witchcraft, I cause it now. Please help your neighbor so they don't enjoy themselves. Go, go, be free. I command that power by fire by fire by fire it leaves you now those of you here i want you to lift your hands overflow two overflow two lift your hands let me go to the front there enough is enough as i pass this place listen i want you to be very sensitive there is a strong anointing tonight overflow two Please help your neighbors. I'm only going to pass here right there. 
as soon as I come close to you, except God is not God, if there is any force holding you, holding your life and your ministry, it must go right now. Right now in Jesus' name, be free. Be free now. Be free now. Be free now. I command those devils, go, 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 go. Break it, edge. let them go. Go, go now. Release them, release them, release them. Every covenant, release them. I break that power now. Now, 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 be broken. Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord! Now, listen, I didn't know we have an extra overflow here. I want to pray for those by the side here. As I stretch my hands to you, please don't waste your time. I'm seeing fire already. Here. In the name of Jesus, at the count of three, those of you by the roadside, one, two. Let them go by the power of the Holy Ghost. I release you. Please help them so they don't injure themselves. I declare, I decree and I declare, you are free. Praise the Lord. Overflow 3, your life is about to change. Listen. Listen. Honestly, there is, there is an anger in my spirit. Because as I entered, I'm just seeing chains everywhere. Right now, in the name of Jesus, at the count of 3, bring all of them out. From the front to the back. Right now, at the count of 3, overflow 3, all of you shout Jesus. 1, 2, 3. Every power, bring them out. Every yoke, every force, every operation of darkness, bring them out. I'm seeing chains on people's feet. Chains, chains, chains be broken now. Be broken now, be broken now, be broken now, be broken now. Change, be broken now. Hallelujah. Bring them out. Overflow three, lift your hands and see praying. Listen. I'm seeing, I'm seeing patterns. Something that is not just happening to you alone. Happening to your father, your mother. As soon as I pray now, I'm seeing fire all over this place. Anyone under that case, you must be free now. At the count of three, anyone holding any pattern, any generational thing, in the name that is above all names. At the count of three, one, two, three. Shout Jesus. Bring them out. That devil must let you go today. My God, look at what God is doing in overflow three. Shaprakato shekete skaba. Embrakato koto shabaria. Look at what God is doing in this place. Hallelujah. Listen to me. The Lord is showing me. I'm coming back. But I don't know why God is, is, is on the case of overflow 3. The Lord is showing me some of you. I'm seeing you are climbing a ladder. But that ladder breaks down and brings you down. You see things as if it's supposed to happen. But a force draws you back. The moment someone wants to lift you, you will have a dream in the night. And in that, in that dream, someone will come to sleep with you. Or something will happen. Right now at the count of three, shout Jesus. I command those devils. One, two, three. Let them go now. 
let them go now total emancipation hallelujah jakakos kaparusi kata hasana katushia embrekata katos kata breketish now now all those who are under the anointing here outside i pass a decree that every power that has held you i speak as one send at the count of three let them go one two three go 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 let them go lose your hold over their lives let them go now let them go now let them go now hallelujah i'm inside this place now and i'm standing in the spirit i've not started impartation yet but the lord is showing me the number 12 and the lord is saying there are 12 people here there is a strong call upon your life there is a mighty anointing lord where are they drink of that wine a ministry of signs and wonders ministry of signs and wonders a ministry of signs and wonders a ministry of signs and wonders signs and wonders signs and wonders i'm still praying the anointing of the spirit is still locating men i don't know why god is talking about ministry the call don't run away from the call don't run from the call a ministry of signs and wonders the lord is telling someone you are the liberator of your family a ministry of signs 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 there are ladies here entering that ministry of signs and wonders signs and wonders hallelujah main auditorium lift your hands i'm seeing i'm seeing a distribution of the healing anointing going on in the main auditorium and i stretch my hands from here it doesn't matter what overflow you just be sensitive to what god is doing main auditorium i'm seeing eight people eight people in the main auditorium at the count of three right now in the name of jesus fire will come upon your hands i'm prophesying to the main auditorium but everybody can receive i decree and declare that healing anointing one two three let that anointing come now let it come now fresh fire hallelujah listen listen i'm seeing oh my god the lord is opening my eyes here i'm i'm seeing someone don't don't be ashamed and don't be embarrassed your father i don't know if i'm seeing something like a priest this is someone that worships something like an idol is in your house i'm not saying you're a bad person please i'm not saying you're a bad person you grew up seeing this happen that they worship those idols that gentleman is here in overflow three oh, oh, oh yeah please who is that person come i want to break that thing now from your life please quickly please make sure you hear what i say before you come just let make way for them the power of witchcraft young man you're going to be a mighty man of god i don't know you lift your hands an anointing is coming upon you now huh? it will shift you to a realm of signs and wonder or let that anointing come upon him right now in the name of jesus christ Hold my hands, my dear. The power of idols. In the name of Jesus, I break that force now. I break that force now. I break the force now. 
testimony of breakthrough for you and for your family in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus hallelujah I'm praying listen I stretch my hands towards you and I speak I don't know what it is that you have been involved in but in Jesus name I'm stretching my hands why am I seeing fire leaving my hands who is it looking for in the name of Jesus Christ I command everything that is not of God be broken now the blood be broken now by the blood be broken now by the blood be broken now by the blood be broken now hallelujah just two more things I'll do here whether I'm in this overflow or not I just stood here to show you that it makes no difference I know the larger congregation is here lift your hands all of you if you can just lift it as high to the heavens now I'm seeing you don't have to come out but I'm seeing keys in the spirit listen this is access to a new dimension and I'm seeing the number 44 just lift your hands you don't need to say anything father I stand as one sent those keys are locating families and locating people it may be a key that explains why things have not been working Lord from the front to the back like a mighty wind whoever must receive that key receive it now receive it now receive it now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ let her go now out out now now this lady wearing a red hair tie in the name of Jesus I'm seeing a grace that is coming let that anointing come upon you in the name of Jesus Christ let that anointing come upon you hallelujah overflow three I'm seen by the Spirit the Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing the names of members of your family like written already written already I'm going to pray listen except God has not sent me as I'm praying some of you instantly the power of God will come upon you and God is going to open your eyes you are going to see victory and deliverance in fact I see a family where three of your siblings they've married none of them has a child none of them at all has a child they've done everything to do but there's no child but I stand in the name of the Lord father where are those families right now like a mighty wind like a mighty wind oh god let it end right now let there be an opening let there be an opening let there be an opening in the name that is above all names let there be an opening young lady come call that lady for me call this gentleman too this man yes bring him in the name of jesus you need to be delivered i command the spirit that torments you to go now by the power of the Holy Ghost I release you my dear hold my hands to you I'm seeing that your life is about to change two weeks from now it will surprise you what the Lord is going to do in your life I decree and I declare it over your life I stand by the anointing and I pray for you father according to your word within two weeks turn this lady's life around supernaturally in the name of Jesus Emeka, who is Emeka? 
Emeka. I'm hearing a name Emeka. Overflow three here. I'm just talking to overflow three people. Emeka, Emeka. Please quickly, please quickly. Don't waste our time. Where is that gentleman? What's your name? I want to pray. What do you do? I'm going to pray for you. You are not from this place. You came for NYSE. I want to pray. Lift your hands. Because I'm seeing, look at me. The Lord is giving you the grace for wealth. Huh? I want you to believe it. But every prosperity that does not have an assignment will end up destroying the people. You love Jesus with all your heart? I want to pray for you. It will surprise you the way God will begin to turn things around in your life. Father, change this gentleman's story in the name of Jesus forever. Overflow 3, I'm still praying. The spirit of prophecy is coming on nine people. I will count four at the fourth count. One, two, three. Where are they, oh God? Four. Nine people. Nine people. The spirit of prophecy. The spirit of prophecy. All of you, open your mouth and begin to pray. Everything you desire, overflow three. Open your mouth and decree. Open your mouth and decree. I'm seeing an anointing around here. Who is that person? I stretch my hands. I'm seeing chains breaking just within this region as I'm standing here. Father, let the chains be broken now. The anointing of the Spirit. Find that person. Let the chains be broken right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now, be broken now. Hallelujah. Please, everyone pray. Everyone pray. Everyone pray. Everyone pray. Hold on. There's someone here, the Lord is saying, I'm rolling away your shame. I'm seeing light. As I was just passing, I just saw light. Two people. Let the anointing find those people now. Two people. Right now, I decree. Overflow two. Right now, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I decree and declare by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Shame. Reproach. Let it go now. Shame. Reproach. Let it go now. Shame. Reproach. Help them. Let it go now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Who is Gabriel? Gabriel. Gabriel. I'm hearing a name. Who is Gabriel? Is there someone like that? You are wearing a maroon. You are wearing like maroon kaftan. Gabriel. Maroon kaftan. Is there someone like that? What's your name? Do I know you? Lift your hands, my brother. God is about to change your life. God is about to turn your life around. Uh, where are you coming from? I want to pray for you. You love Jesus. What is is it Poleku or Aleku? What is that? Huh? Huh? Where are you from? Benway State. You are from Benway State. This is what has tied down your life and your family. I want to pray for you. I'm not a herbalist there. Eh? Father, in the name of Jesus, let this gentleman be free right now. I command that devil to leave you now. Just keep him there. In the name of Jesus. These two people, this gentleman, you, yes, and the lady by you. Come, quickly. Please. Blow, blow, blow like a mighty wind. Spirit of victory. What do you do, my friend? You are a student. You love Jesus. I want to pray for you. Huh? Yes, Are you together? Yes, sir. Because I saw light on you. Husband and wife? Yes, please, sir. Well, I'm not going to discuss your issue now, but two of you need deliverance. Eh? You love Jesus, but you need serious deliverance based on what I'm seeing now. Huh? You are not husband and wife yet, but I'm seeing a lot of stories. Father, in the name of Jesus, look at me. You're going to be very wealthy, but the first thing you need to edit are your friends. Huh? Hear what I'm telling you. Huh? 
my, uh, my sister, you know what I'm saying, right? Huh? So your friends, huh? Confirm, sir. Listen to me. You are not truly born again if your friends don't change. Hear it from me. All this born again that is one leg and you have all kinds of friends. If if I am a drunkard and you are not a drunkard but we are staying together, I'm close to a drunkard. That means I can be implicated by everything a drunkard can be implicated by. Is that true? So, my friend, you love God, eh? But you see, um, look at what I'm doing. One leg in, one leg out. Huh? Don't be embarrassed. When I make the altar call, you need to run and come quickly. Jesus is not just some religious thing that you just run to. Just for, No, 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 no. Let, let's take God serious and take him. Look, what I see, my friend, I see God turning your life in a way that will surprise you. But friends, and this is not just a message to this gentleman alone. It's a message to many of us. Because the demons that destroy our lives work by bringing wrong friends they make you compromise your values it's not your fault but when they come they are vocal about what they believe and because you do not have a community of like-minded believers but let me tell you the truth it matters who you listen to if the devil positions a wrong person to counsel you and they give you a counsel of a hit or fail God may be calling you to a great ministry, but you will hear a counsel that would destroy God's purpose over your life. I pray for everyone here that in the name of Jesus, if you are under the yoke of wrong friends, I stand and I speak right now. May the Lord set you free this night. In the name of Jesus Christ. My dear, there is favor on your life, but it's not speaking at all. Hmm? You are a nice lady come i'm looking at you i'm seeing a young lady but i'm seeing the face of you and another old woman flashing me and going back see wickedness is real oh let me tell you my brothers and my sisters wickedness is real huh this is a young beautiful lady you see her standing but you now look at it do you know let me explain something whatever overflow just listen i want to explain something you see this is the mistake that we men of God make sometimes. I can look at a beautiful lady like this now and see the face of an old woman. And if my word base is not sound and balanced, I will, I will interpret the vision I've seen verbatim and now call her a witch. You see the mistake we make? That we call people and then assuming now they are married, I will now advise him and say, Mr. Man, you married a witch. Oh. You, do you know what it means to be a witch? So God is, you see that God is, is balancing a lot of things in our lives. Let's be careful. Because sometimes we may see a vision. I already know what is happening. It is true that the lady needs help. But it doesn't mean, imagine that I look at this lady now and say, my dear, you're a witch. No. This is a lovely, she has a beautiful heart. I already see by the spirit. Very beautiful heart. But it, beauty and a good heart does not take away oppression. It takes the power of God. How terrible art thou in your ways. Through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves. So many of you are here. You find out, for instance, the moment you enter a relationship, come for instance, as you mean, I enter a relationship with this lady and you find out that there may be something wrong in her life and it starts affecting me. Have you seen that happen? I'm doing well in business, but just because I married this lady, I start going down. And now you meet a man of God and if, the man, if you are in ministry here, please be careful. You have to trust God for grace to be balanced. Are we together? I can now look at this lady and say, Ah, your wife is the reason behind your failure. Um, what I'm trying to say is that, Oh, there might be a spirit connected to her that is affecting me and the works of my hands. But it doesn't mean she's bad. A good man of God will bring about that separation. And then through the transforming power of the word, now help this couple to stand and become the best of couple because a body without a spirit is dead so it's not about condemning and destroying the body are you getting it now so my dear let me tell you you're a wonderful lady huh we are going to deal with this nonsense now this whatever it is that the devil is because this thing is affecting your life you don't know why 
good things don't come to you. You are a very nice lady. Hold my hands. Father, hold it with both of your hands. I decree and declare. Ah. I'm seeing fire leaving my hands in the name of Jesus I command this devil I'm seeing through the face of this old woman be gone now my dear I set you free and I open the door of favor for you right now please everybody lift your hands I'm seeing I've not seen this in a long time I'm seeing the map of Nigeria and I'm seeing an anointing going to Benway State Benway State now Benway State you are from Benway State you see that that power will touch you even if you don't know what state you are from Benway State Lord where is in the name of Jesus the power of God is bringing deliverance Benway State in the name that is above all names in the name that is above all names in the name of Jesus madam I'm going to pray for you two things I'm seeing that the devil wants to put stroke, complete stroke. The devil wants to paralyze you from head to toe. But we're going to destroy that now. In the name of Jesus, hold my hands. I decree and declare, be free now by the power of the Holy Spirit. Madam, I don't know you, but ah, you please come. Ah. This is your first time coming. I need to pray for you. What do you do, ma? you are jobless ma huh i'm looking at you and i'm seeing in the realm of the spirit two of your hands are tied there is nothing you do that works and prospers it's not normal you are a very good woman please don't be embarrassed i hope i'm not embarrassing you i want to pray for you i give you three weeks 21 days ma your life will turn around in a way that will surprise you i lay my hands right now and I declare, I'm seeing chains leaving you. I command those chains to go. Father, turn her life around. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Please open your mouth and begin to pray. Hold on. Hold my hands. In the name of Jesus Christ. I open that closed door now. I open that closed door now. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Please open your mouth and begin to pray. Everyone, open your mouth and pray. The Lord is asking me to stand here, just here, just to stand here. Because the Lord is bringing breakthrough here and here, here and here, right now, here and here. I command right now by the power of the Holy Spirit, every planting that is not of God, I uproot it now, I uproot it now, I uproot it now. Lift your voice and begin to pray, please. Lift your voice and begin to pray. In the name of Jesus, lift your voice and begin to pray. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I know our time is gone. We are going to be very fast. Sir, you're welcome, sir. Can I pray for you, sir? Why are they here? Priest. You, sir. You are a priest. I served, my father served and died. And died. Sorry, where are you from, sir? I'm from Mallory. Sir, I want to pray for you. The Bible says, even the lawful captives, even the lawful captives. My brothers and my sisters, you will be surprised to see what happens in your life after this miracle service. This, this woman, come. Madam, you, yes, come. Please, quickly, come. We're out of time. Say in Jesus' name. Say it in Jesus' name. My life is about to change. Say it again. Say in Jesus' name. Reproach is leaving me now. In the name of Jesus, let it go forever. In Jesus' name. Sir, I hold your hands and in the name of Jesus, every ordinance that is not of God, help him. I command that it is broken right now. You are an elderly man. But I use you as a point of contact. We break every ordinance of darkness. This, this lady too. Priest, you? Your dad? Your father is a priest. Currently? Oh, where? Oshun State. Don't be embarrassed. Eh? You are here because Jesus wants to help you. Lord Jesus, 
it is not your will that any man perish but that everyone comes to the knowledge of the truth i deliver this lady right now everything they have given you to drink and eat i stand by the rod of a higher priesthood and i set you free now be gone now out let it leave her i'm seeing that the father has given her so many things in her life but in the name of jesus Hi. jesus power is really super power really super power that in one moment something that has been done in a lifetime can live out now everything that is not of god a father is a priest or not her uncle direct father imagine how many times she has been involved in all of these things but in jesus name you are set free this this man too why is he here look at my eyes just look at my eyes you are receiving the healing anointing now eh? in the name of jesus christ lord grant him access to the healing anointing your healing power now oh dear our time is gone this is sometimes i honestly wish that this this because there are so many things i see but we have to work with time this lady you come hurry up now please come uh, we're out of time wonderful lady look at me you are a savior to your family you hear what i said you are a savior you may look small but you are a savior to your family the only thing is that you need to continually be serious with god your heart with him your heart with him hold my hands father in the name of jesus i take away distraction from her life right now by the anointing of the holy spirit i take away distraction i take away distraction okay we have we've not even prayed for the sequel my dear come this lady waving your hands come quickly your life is about to change come where are you coming from you are coming from abuja yes, i'm here with my husband husband yeah. where are you sir let's clap for the husband <clears throat> two of you came from abuja Last time you came with for som came. i can't remember you came with you oh your son was a graduate of som no we came with him oh okay so graduate. i want to pray what do you do sir um i'm a minister of god but at the same time i do business boys so sir i want to pray for you eh? things are not working you need the anointing you are a sincere man my dear the prophetic grace is coming on you as i'm speaking now in the name that is above all names i stretch my hands that anointing you will start having dreams receive that grace two of you need empowerment ministry ministry without genuine empowerment will make it look as if you are wasting your time are you a man of god stand up stand up take that anointing now in the name of jesus you step into a new dimension i take away shame and reproach from your life and ministry from today you step into a realm of signs wonders miracles in the name of jesus can i pray for you sir look at me hold my hands hold my hands just hold it with both of your hands in the name of jesus i transfer grace signs and wonders strange testimonies your business between now and 30th of november sir your finances will change you and your wife in ways that will surprise you you will come back and testify in the name of jesus christ this man waving your hands come together with that woman by your side who is she come please two of you quickly let's appreciate them as they come oh oh I want to pray for you ah. madam I'm looking at you you're a nice woman but I'm seeing you carrying a load huh 
I'm seeing you like this and I'm seeing a load on your head. And if I don't pray for you, this load is going to destroy you. I want to pray for you. Where are you coming from? Are you new here? Bielsa. Bielsa. Hmm. All the way. I think we should appreciate them. What do you do, sir? I'm a pastor. You're a pastor. You're in ministry, both of you? Evangelist. My ministry is separate. Your ministry is separate, evangelist. but both of you came from yes, Bielsa. You're an evangelist. Yes. You pastor a church? Yes. How long has it been? Okay, I was uh, about four years now in Bielsa. But you were somewhere? Yes, I was in Abuja. You were in Abuja? Yes. And then you left Abuja and went to Bielsa. Do you know what happened? Is it your church now? You're serving someone else's church. Okay, I want to pray for you. Because what I see God do through your life, I'm seeing God giving you two things. The grace for leadership, number one. Number two, the grace for finances. These two graces, God is giving it to you. I don't know you, sir. I'm seeing you for the first time. Ma, you're an evangelist. I'm going to pray for you. What do you do? You hold crusades and all of that? No, I, I usually have meetings every month and then I speak on radio. I have a live radio. I do my evangelical on radio and then. Oh, you do a live radio? Yes, live radio talk show. Three things one, barrenness. Two, poverty. Three, witchcraft. You are carrying the grace to smash nonsense out of these three things as you are going back. Don't forget. Huh? The same grace on you, I'm seeing it come on this lady. This one. This one. This lady I'm talking to. I want to pray for you. Sir, this thing is an election of grace. You see, I'm, I'm also a spectator. The same way you are watching. Me too, I'm watching. With wonder and shock, the way this thing works. That God can just change a man's life overnight overnight evangelist my hold my hands father this is a dear woman of god all the way from bielsa i stand by the anointing of the holy spirit and i declare fresh anointing fresh dimensions in the spirit and i pray madam the lord is asking me to pray for your finances seriously for your finances and then the lord is saying i should tell you to pray for faithful workers I'm seeing you do a program for women when you go back. This thing I'm seeing is going to be a powerful program. There is a program in Abuja that looks like what you would do. It's called When Women Pray. I'm seeing that same kind of grace on you. That you are going back to Bielsa and God is giving you uncommon grace for women. In the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare you carry that grace right now, madam. My God will honor you. Ah! In the name of Jesus, supernatural grace. Drink of that wine. Sir, I'll pray for you. The grace for leadership, the grace for finance. But I'm, ah, it's not only pastoring I'm seeing you do. What else do you do? I manufacture paint. You manufacture paint. That's right. Sir, what am I seeing? This is somebody, it's, it's not directly the government. But this is somebody that is connected to the government. The Lord is going to connect him to you. It's, it has something to do with supplies. That thing will make you millions overnight in a way that it will surprise you. Please write it. You will see it happen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for this man of God. I stretch my hands. Drink of that wine. That anointing. Drink of that wine. You will never be the same. I stretch my hands. I take away every limitation from your life. And I decree and I declare your life turns around from today in the name of Jesus. Give Jesus praise. Goodness, 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 goodness. Can we still pray for the sick? We can't close this without praying for the sick. In the name of Jesus. Be healed from it now. I command that devil, that virus. Go! Now! In the name of Jesus. You go and write your test. Bring back your results. Go. Listen. 
I, can we? Our time is gone. Oh dear. You see how sometimes this thing, we are really constrained. That's why we do our best. The healing anointing is already flowing. God wants to heal. Maybe I'll just pray. I'll just pray for the sick from here. We'll do it that way. Right? But make no mistakes. Just that you, that you are not coming out doesn't mean I want to pray for you now. We'll take a few testimonies now. In the last three or four months, I have seen, I don't know why this happens, but I have seen a dimension of the healing power of God. Very creative miracles. So I want to pray. You are trusting God for a miracle. Lay your hand right now on your body quickly. I want to pray for you now. Please believe God for a miracle. Now, this is what will happen. Overflow. One, two, three. The roadside. And then those following us online. Our time is gone. But as soon as I pray for you now. I pray for you. The power of God is going to come upon you. I'm going to ask you to check yourself. Praise the Lord. We may not take all the testimonies. But since we have chosen this method now. As soon as I pray, I ask you to check yourself. You will be surprised what has happened to you. And whether you are in overflow one, two, or three, I'm going to ask you to run very quickly. You're going to come right here. Pastor Jimmy will be here with Pastor Alpha. They will just check you and we'll take one or two of the testimonies and I'll just confirm that. Um, how many of you brought your prayer request? Let me see. Did you bring your prayer request? Okay, ushers, this is what you, I want you to do. PR department, help them. Protocol, please help them. While I'm praying for the sick, I think we can do it too. Your prayer request, please make sure that your prayer request or that of your loved ones get to the ushers. Just lift it. The ushers have a system of collecting it. You don't have to be rowdy. Those outside. You can pass it to the last person in the aisle if you will not bring any confusion. You can have that very quickly, please. Lay your hands now. I want to pray. Jesus. A lady in overflow one is going to shout a loud shout for everybody to hear as soon as that shout happens i'll begin to pray for the sick very loud shout from overflow one a strong anointing is coming on that person the moment that happens that's the shout there now i'm ready to pray for the sick in the name Please agree with me everyone in the name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare right now those under the anointing you don't have to bring them out I'm, I'm praying now every spirit of infirmity please make sure you are hearing me overflow one two three every spirit of infirmity right now by the power of the Holy Ghost I curse you now I curse you now say amen I curse you now in the name of Jesus. I command every spirit behind every infirmity over anyone's life. Be healed now in Jesus' name. Be healed, my God. The power of God is touching people already. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Overflow one, two, three by the roadside, be healed in the name of Jesus. Now I command every blood condition be healed from it now in Jesus' name. Peptic ulcer, the Lord is healing ulcer right now. Be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. Be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. Lumps, all kinds of lumps, multiple lumps. I command those devilish lumps to live now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing a number of people having um, hepatitis. The Lord is healing hepatitis right now. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Eye conditions. In the name of Jesus. You're going to feel fire just come to your eyes. 
be healed right now in the name of Jesus be healed in the name of Jesus every pain that has to do with the bones I decree and declare let the power of God touch you right now there's someone you have severe pain around your back just right here your lumbar vertebra in the name of Jesus I stretch my hands be healed right now in Jesus name be healed in Jesus name there's someone you don't hear well with your this is left left ear and then sometimes you just hear like a sharp you know how bees are that sound the power of God is touching you right now in the name of Jesus every kind of fibroid every kind of growth in your stomach in the name of Jesus be healed from it now be healed from it now be healed from it now now whether I mention your case or not whatever is wrong with you I stretch my hands and I declare be healed in the name of Jesus be healed in the name of Jesus some of you when you fell under the anointing long before I started praying for the sick you got up and found out that you have been healed now overflow one if they are coming here for the healing please just clear the way for them overflow one overflow two overflow three and the roadside I'll give you a minute those online if you're healed you can you know just just send it as an inbox on our Facebook page or you can find a way to post it I want you to check yourself now within a minute or two the moment you find out that the power of God has touched you make your way some of you you get up under the anointing you find out that the pain there's a lady who has a severe case of bleeding go and check yourself the bleeding is gone gone completely and I'm seeing someone heaviness around the chest is just lifted gone like that please check yourself very quickly and come we may not take all the testimonies but at least let's take a few while we are doing that let me have all the prayer requests very quickly God bless you check yourself quickly Koinonia are you celebrating Jesus the Lord is touching people show them where to come look at look at God touching people already please make your way make your way the power of God has touched you those outside overflow one overflow two clear the way for them just come you can stand on the queue there and let's have one or two testimonies God bless you Koinonia are you celebrating miracles here yeah. Make your way. Be bold. Don't be ashamed. Make your way as soon as the power of God has touched you. Back pain since hold last on, year. Hold on, you... just a moment, please. All make sure if 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 your prayer request has not been collected, please. I want you to wave it. Jesus is still healing people. You just come join the queue. God bless you. Yes, please. Back pain since last year. Can you, you... sit for a, a few minutes? Just sit for a few minutes and then we're done. Let's just hear the testimonies. If as you are hearing the testimony, God is still healing people and i want you to make your way and then come to okay go ahead pastor Alpha. my god the... god is still touching people i'm seeing people being touched even in overflow three overflow three check yourself right now and make your way yes please you go mentioned ahead. the case of back pain she's been having the problems this last month back but pain. she's healed now how long come my dear let's have another mic please anytime we're doing this please technically it should be a standard procedure you should know what we're doing please so that we don't delay unnecessarily how long my dear since last month yes in the name of jesus christ i decree and declare it never returns again by the power of the holy spirit back pain gone forever heaviness in the chest disappeared how long my dear just when you came here in the name of jesus hold my hands um i'm seeing someone you had something like a a growth around your neck check it now you'll be surprised to find out it's gone gone completely gone completely by the power of the holy ghost gone completely in jesus name i declare that every operation of darkness over you is gone in jesus name give jesus praise deafness in the left ear since 2012 since 2012 oh come on koinonia how long my friend a man of god told me about it 2012 and i prayed but i was hearing those b sounds and i don't hear really which well. of them put your hand there now in the name of Jesus it never never returns to you by the power of the Holy Spirit yes also you mentioned also how long yes. okay where are you from Kaduna State that's where you are from your state of origin 
No biologically. Biologically, where are you from? I'm from each Patan court. I mean, I'm not pronounced it. There's a reason why I said this. There's a lot. You don't know where you are from. There is a long story. Leave the issue of healing now. Eh? I need to pray for you. Don't feel bad. Huh? Look at me. Where are your parents? Who are you staying with? My mom and mother, my stepdad at Kaduna. Okay, it's okay. I'll talk to you. Eh? Father, help this gentleman because this gentleman is a great gentleman, but there is a lot I'm seeing in your life. I crush the hand of darkness over your life now and I declare be free in Jesus' also, name. Koinonia, you are pain. not celebrating. You are so used to miracles in this place. He was feeling the May pain, but as you prayed for him, it left. It's gone completely. How long? Since July. July. In the name of Jesus Christ, may the Lord perfect you. Apostle, you mentioned someone with pain at the back. It was her for the past three years. What's your name, my dear? Juliana. Juliana. You mentioned something, the lower... Uh, the lower, lower back, back pain. It affected her left leg also. This pain in Check her back. Check it now. Check it. Check it. Any pain. Yes. It's gone completely. Give the Jesus last three praise. years. <laughs> in the name of Jesus Christ. It never returns to you again. Please make sure that we have the request. If you are still yet, if you are still with your... Wave it. Just wave it and an usher will come. Look at that man. And you are sitting quietly there. You wave it and let them know. Pain at the back, completely healed. Pain at the back. You fell under the anointing. Ah, see you looking. In the name of Jesus. It's, it's a good baguette, my friend. Huh? If you fall under the anointing and your destiny arises, it's a wise baguette. Is that true? In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare, never again in your life. The power of God is coming on someone in overflow one. Overflow one. Please carry the person and bring the person. Overflow one. The overflow by the roadside. Overflow two. Sorry. Overflow two. I meant to say. Ah, look how powerful the power of God is. I said overflow one and nothing happened. I just said overflow two. Then I now went to say. She's had pain on the left, left shoulder since How long, my dear? Seven. Let her talk. How long? 2007. You've had what? I've had this pain. It will come and go, come and go. But today it has been intense. But when you mentioned the case, the pain left. It's gone completely. Check yourself. Do what you couldn't do. Up, down. Come. In the name of Jesus Christ. I will pray, but the person I'm talking about is overflow two. Overflow two. The overflow by the roadside. So you bring the person, the name of Jesus, perfection for you right now. In Jesus' name. She's had serious um, back pain that back she pain. had to start horse riding so that you can correct. But today they asked you to ride gone. a horse? Yes. Who said you should ride a horse? The doctor? Yeah. Or just advisors? <laughs> don't, don't She's shy. <laughs> the horse, this is the man. It's amazing how you come for koinonia minding yourself and you are surprised to see people just carry you and you're wondering where am i going to the anointing amazing let me just talk to them and then don't worry do your horse thing eh? i'm just happy that you are healed so you can go and ride your horse now for fun in the name of jesus you are perfected completely perfected in jesus name i take away this proverb called ikabod over your life and over your family i'm speaking to both of you now from overflow too in the name of jesus i set you free and i decree and declare that that proverb shall no longer be mentioned in your life it will no longer be ichabod in jesus name i'm coming here but you are the one i'm talking to where eh? debbie it's not the this person you hold this one don't worry they'll hold her in the name of jesus the lord is saying he is going to use you to change everything in your family it will be like a dream but he is going to use you he's making you a savior over your family don't ask how it's going to happen it's by the anointing the spirit entered me when he spake unto me that god is going to use you and change everything in your family 
in the name of Jesus. Yes, go ahead. She's had severe menstrual pain since she started menstruating that resulted in serious back pain. How Came old are you now? Pain this evening. Sir? How old are you now? 21. 21? And she's had severe menstrual pain. Yes. And she came here with the pain today. But the Don't pain is gone. believe that thing, oh. In the name of Jesus, I cancel it forever. Amen. Say amen. amen. By the power of the Holy Spirit, severe menstrual pain goes back to hell. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. amen. Yes, sir. She had headache, heaviness in the chest. Heaviness? In the chest. Okay. And then she had severe headache. And as you prayed for her, it totally and, left. And what? Hiccup. She's the heaviness used to make her hiccup. She was even hiccuping during the service. But as you prayed, she's totally healed. God bless you. Look at me. Where did you come from? Kaduna. Kaduna State. You are going back. Eh? Where's your mother? She's in Bauchi. When are you going to see her? I'm serving in Kaduna, so it has to be December. December. If I, if I give you an instruction for your mother, will you obey it? Huh? Look for 1,000 Naira recharge card. Eh? Send it to your mother to bless her and watch what happens in your life. You just do what I ask you to do. It's not some superstition. Please, you get my point. It's just the law of honor that will trigger something. I release my faith with you. Your mother is going to pray one prayer for you that looks like she's playing. But you watch what that play will do in your life. In she Jesus. had ulcer, peptic ulcer. As she prayed for her, she was totally... Peptic ulcer. How long? Put your hand on your chest. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare, peptic ulcer goes back to hell. In the mighty name of Jesus, goes to hell forever. She also had ulcer, but she also had kidney inflammation. She used to feel a sharp pain. She's been healed of the ulcer. Now when she presses the place before press she it. will feel, press it. Press it. Any pain? No pain. Gone completely. No. Come on, Koinonia. May God forgive you. May God, you people have seen signs and wonders too much to a point that God bless you. He had a sharp pain in his left side. Okay. You mentioned it. And then he also used to experience dizziness. That he would just be standing, be dizzy and then slump. But as you prayed for him, he was totally you just slump like that? Yeah, they may even have to catch it. It happened, it happened once, August, August 26th. You just slump like that? Yes, I was falling and then my brother caught me. Come. What if you fall down like the epileptic patient that used to fall inside fire? The devil will just wait until you are crossing a bridge. Then that wicked spirit will come because he comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. In Jesus' name, I set you free. You are free now. You are free forever. In Jesus' name. Back pain disappeared. He's had back pain for a long time. Back pain, sir? Yes. In Jesus' name, let it go and go forever. Never to return again. In Sometimes Jesus. the two eyes go blind, other times only the right one go blind, but now he's totally healed, he can see with both eyes. Have you gone to the hospital for this? But sometimes you just go blank like that. Come, in the name of Jesus, put your hands on your eyes. I decree and declare perfection. It's not just the bones are what give structures to a person, doctors tell us. That means that by this miracle, God is speaking through it, right? Like he's doing the miracle of Ezekiel 37, the bones coming back, be a restoration of it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. God bless you. Yes, please go ahead. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins, incline thy ears to my words, let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you